Good morning. This is the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals public hearing for February 12th, 2019. We'll begin with a special order calendar. Decision items. Item number one, 10370 BC, 203 East 74th Street, Manhattan. Anyone here for this? Good morning, uh, Commissioners, Chair, Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Mitch Corby. I'm here on behalf of my colleague, Jen Dixon, who couldn't quite make it this morning. Uh, and on behalf of the applicant, thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't think we had any other mm -hmm. issues open, so I'd like to make a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. <coughs> Commissioner Otley <coughs> Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. You okay? Thank, thank you so you. much. Take care. Item number 240-80 BC, <coughs> 3541, 3941 West 23rd Street, 20-22 West 24th Street, Manhattan. Good morning, Jordan Motion, Brian Cave on behalf of uh, on behalf of the applicant. Okay, so this was closed, so we'll we'll talk so that we don't need to reopen. I don't think there the only open issue was whether the finding and whether the conditions had been satisfied and we received yesterday a letter from the applicant um, indicating that conditions were satisfied, including access by tenants to the roof. Right. Um, so then I don't think there were any other issues, right? No. So then I'd like to make a motion to grant on condition. The condition is that um, restoration of the subject building be completed prior to TCO pursuant to the um, restrictive declaration and maintenance program um, by the Landmarks Preservation Commission, with the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Okay. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Atlee Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Continued hearing items. Item number three, 42929. Thank you. Uh, 42929 BZ, 4801 Kings Highway, Brooklyn. Sorry, just give me one second. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond on the board member question? Okay. It's an adjournment. You signed this one, swear in the matter. Yes, sir. You didn't really need to swear him in because it's an adjournment. But anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. I'm sorry about That's that. Okay. It's okay. <coughs> sorry. Okay. Good morning, Matthew Schomer, David Off Hutcher, and Central. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wanted to adjourn this, right? Yeah, we've just um, we've been working on a site plan that kind of satisfies everyone and satisfies the operational requirements. Um, I think a relatively short adjournment would be well, would be great for be us. What if, our if, yeah. can handle. <laughs> of course. Um, also, to alert you whether or not you heard yesterday's review session, fire department issued violations that should be corrected. They should you should pursue correction so we hear the status of them at the next hearing. And then we also had a letter of support, but a letter of objection citing noise and traffic concerns. Mm -hmm that would be caused by the convenience store, so you should address that in your submission, okay? Absolutely. Okay, so, what do we have? Do we have to set this up? Let's see. Put it on. March 26th? Um, how would yeah. an adjournment to March 26th with the submission March 6th? Uh, that should be good, yeah. That work? Okay. So uh, next year will be March 26th, submission date of March 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, 138.87BZ, 218.36 Hillside Avenue, Queens. Is there an adjournment request on this? Yes. So we, we could put it on. Oh, it says they're working on site improvement, which is weather dependent. So mm. we should give them... Um, some significant okay. amount of time, so they're de dealing with concrete and so on. So, um, yeah, maybe May. Mid-April <coughs> submission. Um, how about, uh, we could do May 21st, the submission date, May 1st. That's good. So, May 21st, next year. Submission date of May 1st. Item number, new cases, item number five, 11553 BZ, 25202 Union Turnpike, Queens. Anyone? 
anybody here? Anyone here for that? You guys, can want somebody want to let's see if yeah. Eric is in the hallway? <laughs> Release. <laughs> I don't see him. I don't see him. We'll have to second call it like that. They usually have so many people. May have to second call it. That would have to be for the next one too. But it's yeah, he's the next one also. I'm gonna do a Fred's then. Okay. No. Yep. Oh. Okay. No issue. We'll second call that one. And the next one. Probably the next one. Uh, item number six, it. we will also second call 26. Well, you need to yeah, call it. You I should call, call it. Call so it. We know 2602 BZ, 1680 Richmond Avenue, Manhattan. We'll second call that one also. Okay. Okay. Item number seven, 18908 BZ, 232. 232 Mercer, which is actually now 228 to 230 Mercer Manhattan. Street, Manhattan. <coughs> Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond on the board member questions? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Frederick A. Becker. Uh, we attended the executive session yesterday. We did submit uh, all new papers, uh, which show the ad correct address of 228 and 230 Mercer Street. That was the statement of facts. This is the application, affidavit of ownership, certificate, certificate, certification, inspection and compliance, sign analysis, zoning analysis, and the plans. Okay. So um, um, just a question about that. So fire department, um, fire department's letter, um, let's see. I'm not sure that they were 100% certain on what the address was, right? And so I'm curious how you came to the conclusion that it's 228, 230 Mercer. Did you know, it says 230 Mercer right I, on the building. That's what I was told by your staff. Oh, so you, as the attorney representing your client, rely on the staff to tell well, you this, what we, the address of we your client's property is. We use this. It, the BID the <laughs> system shows 230. This is what we were directed. So this is how we came up with that address. But I mean, there is actually an address that your client knows the address. There are, building. The building has several addresses. This is one of them. We've, this is what we've used 232. Um, so 230 so, is what the, so biz, si the biz system says 230. And we understand that the fire department uses 230. So we are happy to work with 230. Okay, I'm going to have the fire department speak because I don't know if they actually, right. if they oh. researched the address, um, but really that's the job of council, we by the way. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Well, we, we had been using 232 because that's what the prior application was granted under. Okay. Also, just for um, what it's worth. Uh, let's have um, Chief Daly speak. Right. I just want to correct. They're make, the ones who brought the okay. subject up about the address. Let's just do that first, please. Okay. <coughs> Good morning. I'm John Daly, Fire Department. Yet in reviewing the, the application, uh, I had entered uh, the address 232 on Mercer Street into a DOB biz system. And of course, got this to see a vote, which is described the NYU dormitory building, which does have a house range of 232 to 240. Then I went on to the, um, to the tax map to see the, what lot number the PCE was on, which I discovered was lot 15. From there, entered the block and lot number onto the DOB biz and got the address at 228 and 230 Mercer Street. And also discovered that there's two buildings on one lot. I handle, the suppression system covers both buildings. <coughs> Excuse me, I also visited the building uh, to get a better idea. And this building has four addresses. Uh, Broadway as well, so that's how I was able to discover the error. And Mr. Becker is correct in that the previous um, resolution had 232. Because at the building right now, PCE does the uh, New York Sports Club, they have 232 on over their door, so everyone thought it was correct. But uh, we will be informing them to change that address to 228. In addition, I also uh, researched the fire department records, which we had the correct address, 228 and 230. Uh, we are going to be informing the building owners. They have um, an emergency action plan 
they have to correct the addresses as well. Uh, so we have taken care of it. Okay. And, but I think we all settle, agree with the, the house numbers. Okay. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, um, but uh, just to pick up, you, but the fire department still requested an adjournment, so we're going to continue with this adjournment. I, I respectfully request an uh, withdrawal of my uh, with Oh, so adjournment. you don't want us to lay this over? Well, uh, there are, if you, I do need a little more time. My inspectors are visiting the site um, today, this week, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so we could um, have another hearing scheduled for mm -hmm. in six weeks, and I'll uh, submit my report. Okay, well, these two a second. All right. Okay, give me, I, do, I have to write my report and submit copy. Oh, make it four weeks. Is that better? Mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll <laughs> well, my report. It doesn't matter because it's based on our schedule anyway. Okay, so. all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. The only thing I was trying to say before is a point of reference. Our statement of facts refers to a 12-story building, which is correct. Uh, your caption here refers to a six-story building, so it might want to be amended at some point in the future. There you are. On the calendar, it says six stories, so right. it really should be the, our statement says 12 story. It is a 12 story building. Okay. So it, okay. Oh. All right. So then, um, and then the other question was no change to layout banners or hours. Okay, so no change. All right. And you're not proposing to change the hours of operation. That's what he said. Uh -huh. No change to layout banners. Banners. No, no, no change to layout banners or hours. Or hours. Oh, yes. I didn't hear the last part. Okay, so, oh, wait, but the banners had been already approved by LPC? It's, um, they, we do have sign approvals for them, yes. <laughs> so can you submit them? Yeah, I'm not even sure if that uh, that street, that facade is an LPC facade. The Broadway facade is LPC for sure. But we can submit to sign approvals for those banners. Okay. Well, if it's outside of the district, that's Wait, one thing. But if it, I know the br the Broadway side is a landmark, but right. the Mercer may not be. I will respond back one way or the other. All right. So if it if if it's under jurisdiction, then provide the CN the certificate of, of uh, approval. <coughs> of, of course. Okay. Of appropriateness. Okay. All right then, so we need to put this on for uh, another day. Are there any speakers on this one? <coughs> um, to give the fire department five, six weeks, is that? Uh, four weeks. Four weeks, okay. One. I'll have a report. Four weeks from today is March 12th. How about a continued hearing on April 9th? How about, Mar can we do a March hearing at least? Please. There's March 26th, but this is, I guess we could get it's, from fire department. It's a, it's a, when, whenever yeah. fire department gives it to us, there's be a March 6th submission. From March 26th hearing. That yeah. worked for me. Yeah. Does that okay. work for you, Mr. Bender? And, and, Sorry, what? I, I, would, I was wondering if the board would agree if, for the fire department to file late if they, oh, if they no 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 yeah, so the okay. fire department can obviously give it whenever um it has to do with the filing for um mr becker for mr becker yeah yeah is march 6th submission date okay that's fine and if there are no issues potential close and grant that day as well close and vote yes close and vote of course uh -huh. yes All right. so next okay. hearing march 26th submission date march 6th fire department whenever you're ready Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very much. You. You're Thank you. Back. Item number eight, 150 BZ, 30 Broad Street, Manhattan. Mm. Okay, raise your right hand. You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond on city board member questions. Good morning again, Frederick A. Becker. Um, we went to executive session. Uh, there are only two issues, the fire department, and it, uh, we do not have any signage proposed for exchange or new streets, exchange place or new street. Okay, no, so there's no signs, but um, the other question was, is this a legalization of the expansion? <coughs> the expansion was, right, it, well, it was, it came back as a, the expansion came back as a new case, so this, it, is a legalization, yes. It's a legalization of the drawings that, so we have, um, 
drawings that says existing proposed, right? But the statement of works, I mean, statement of facts states that the work will be completed. So we have a conflict in the materials. Um, uh, that'll help. It's amendment, actually, it's, it's an amendment of a previously granted special permit application. We know. But the question is, was the, the work, work done? Happened. The work has been done. Okay, yeah. so your statement of facts is incorrect right, because correct it says that. that it was completed. That can be corrected. Okay. All right. Um, and I think, and then fire department also requested time to inspect on this one. Okay, this fire, do you want to add anything, Chief Daly? John Daly, fire department. Uh, amendments to the, uh, to the alteration type one application and the PA application, we'd like to see that be done as well. Okay. Amendment to the alt one and the PA application. Yeah. Okay. And um, and so that work that filing should be done prior to our decision. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, should. So that's an instruction to your client Got it. to do that. Okay. All right then. So I'm um, not really sure if that's the same amount of time because it takes longer to <coughs> file and a PA and an alt one. Arguably, you have to do the. I don't know if there's changes to the drawings. I don't know. If they can, they can file a PAA. I mean, just the paperwork. So okay. we have it documented. And my inspector can refer it, and as well as the, the deputy chiefs of the uh, LPPA unit mm -hmm. have a document, and uh, we could also use it as an enforcement tool. Right. But the point is that they need to submit that having been done by March 6th. So that's only three weeks. I don't know if that that's should be enough, enough time. Yeah. That's okay. enough time for us. All right. So same, same, same schedule. schedule. Next Great. hearing, March 26th, or submission date of March 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, second call item. Item number, new cases on the SOC. Item number 511553BZ. Raise your right hand. Sorry. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond on the board member? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Thank you very much um, for having me on again. Elise Folladair from Eric. I'm going to pull the mic down a little bit. Oh, Elise Folladair from Eric Palatnik, PC. On behalf of the applicant today, I have with me the survey you requested um, to show the zoning lot. Great. It is. Um, Does it tell us the lot area? I'm going to have to do a second submission anyway, okay. so I will make okay. sure to clarify that mm -hmm. before the next year. Okay plant trees. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the surveyor doesn't um, show the lot area, in which case you need to contact, oh it does, 10,793.3 square feet. Oh, 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 sorry. I smacked him in the face. So, so sorry. So size of zoning lot. Sorry. Seven hundred ninety-three point three square feet. Okay, great. Um, and then we'll plant trees. That's not a problem in the same area that was shown on the previously approved plan. Mm -hmm. I did confirm. Yeah, they did install a fence. I'm not sure the reason for it. And um, in terms of signage, they got permits for the signage they have using all the frontages. So some frontages have like 10 il illuminated, that's like 10 over, but they have permits for all those signs. So the question is, do they have to go back and redo their signage and get new permits? No, but I, so, sorry, so you mean they, they calculated based on some other method? So they used all the frontages combined, combined and then got permits for it. And they have well below 
the amount of signage of all the combined because it's it's surrounded by streets on every side right 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 whereas like one frontage may be slightly above the others compensate by being well below yeah right. mm -hmm. okay maybe just provide us the permit so, so that was the see that it was permitted yeah okay not a problem and then I guess we need time for mm -hmm. planting so that is right okay that's uh, and then you need um, the it's not clear whether it seems like the site was clear, cleaned up. So it was because yeah. during the notice of comments, mm -hmm. um, we put in a trash enclosure, and um, which you probably saw. So during that period, it was cleaned up, mm -hmm. but planting was not installed. So, so the trees, there's no planting beds or anything. No. So just to be clear, the trees need to be planted in a four foot deep planting bed with curbs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So not just tree because we've even seen ones where it's sort of the dirt just falls over the edge right so it needs to be a real planting bed okay not a problem okay so and I four foot front to back mm -hmm. you know what I mean okay. Uh, okay and then you'll amend the drawings to reflect that yeah um, okay. are there any speakers on this um, all right so since you're going to plant we need to give you April for planting, so a May submission. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of first, if you still have it left. Do you want to do May, first, May 21st, May 1st submission? Uh, we could do that. Okay. Yes. May 21st. Next hearing, submission date of May 1st. Okay. So, so when you um, submit the drawings, make sure that it includes um, a detail of the planting bed with curbs and that it's four foot. Unfortunately, this is the same architect we use on a lot of cases, so I think they're very aware. <laughs> okay, good. All right. All right. Uh, good. So we have the dates, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Second call item, item number 6, 2602 BZ, 1680 Richmond Avenue, Staten Island. You have to raise your right hand. Sorry. And it out, and then you. All right. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board to respond on a state of board member question? Yes. Okay. out the DEC letter um, which closes the spill but it does not meet standards because it was that doesn't mean that it wasn't closed but it was bulk the bulk of the um, re remediation the I don't it's the word for it the bulk of the contaminants Oops. were taken out and then they closed the spill based on that that's what I was told so this that this is a spill closure letter and it was sufficient it met the sufficient amount of bulk contaminants taken out to meet the threshold to close the spill. It's not worded great, that's why. I'm okay, so they were removed, but yeah. the remediation, I thought those are remediation wells that are, you know, they're vaporizing the contaminants. Are they now able to take those out? So they, oh I was told that the little, the tent was going to be taken out and it hasn't yet been taken out. And this letter <coughs> is the closure of the spill. It does leave a few questions because right after it states the spill is closed, there's in parentheses, the not, does not mean Yeah, that's standards. why I asked them and they said that this, it was worded poorly, but this is the spill closure letter. Uh, and when they say does not meet standards, does not meet standards for continued evaluation or does not meet standards as in that's that's really what my question is. It, it is. I asked obscure. about. Yeah, it is obscure. It, it, it isn't. If you keep reading, it's clear that they didn't meet the standards. Okay. Right. So, can we get the DEC spill report? New York State DEC spill report. Well, this is a right. No. Spill so closure. this is a spill closure right. letter, sort of. 
but but it does not and it says all monitoring wells and or system wells which is what we're seeing in that area right mm -hmm. it says must be properly abandoned yeah so oh, thank you so much. um and then it says notwithstanding this approval right i, I right but it goes on to say you had contaminants that migrated off site that you didn't address that there were um environmental conditions that the department was not aware about of and that um i can ask that i'm not yeah. sure that you've done enough sufficient cleanup That's to really protect right. human health in the future yeah, yeah. and you had fraud allegations in obtaining the approval for the inactivation <laughs> so that's like kind of like you failed yeah I'll, i mean i'll ask them again they told me that this was the closure commissioner is it possible that that they are right. leaving themselves open under those circumstances yeah, as opposed be. to as a, that's that's i'm reading it that way and i and i completely agree that that could be a way of reading this which makes it obscure to me but is it possible that yeah. what they're saying is this is closed but we're reserving our right to in the future come back if there is fraud yeah if this yeah, this bill right. has migrated that's, that's that's the way I read yeah, it. They told also. me that language was standard in all. I, and it could language. very well may, yeah. may be, uh, but if they can find the definition of does not meet standards, which could mean does not meet standards for us to continue investigating, yeah, or, or uh, a plethora of things. But yeah, to me, right now, could how be you're that. describing it as how they described it to me. Yeah, but we, I, and I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not questioning that. Yeah. I'm just so yeah. you were asked. That we had right. spoken to, we discussed this with with our uh, environmental project manager, Tracy. And she said that uh, the applicant should put in a FOIL request with DEC for a New York State DEC spill report for the spill in question and then provide that record for the next submission so it would give report and any think, other documentation. And that's I right. think that would clear it all up yeah, for us. That, yeah, if yeah, the yeah, spill report exactly. would tell us whether and what, what the circumstances are uh, as far as DEP knows it, and yeah. I think that's the easiest way to go about it. Okay. Not a problem. So, and then once this is cleared up, they intend to restripe and put in the parking. But that hasn't been done yet because they're still the, air, the remediation area is still intact. Okay, so I, I think that's part of the question: is what is because we were asking for a timeline for completion of the work. Yeah. So there must be a timeline related to this letter and what the DEC is allowing them to do to remove the monitoring wells. So the tent is one thing, but there's monitoring wells because they want to change that to parking spaces. Yeah. Everything right. else though has been completed. Everything else, what? Yeah. All the other work on the site has been completed. It's just those parking spaces in there. Okay, so, so all right, so we needed to see photos. We we don't know anything about this. You right. know, well, they, you guys the have discussed the, the, the photos yesterday and said it looked like the work was completed, but you weren't sure from the statement that it appeared. So I'm just confirming that all the other work has been completed. So I can do true. more photos. Okay. Yeah, no, so, so I think what's confusing is... Um, yeah, so what's confusing is this request for additional, it's, an, it's just an extension of time to s obtain a CFO, yeah. right? So the question is, what is still open that prevents you from obtaining a CFO? Yeah. And that's what I, I don't know. Maybe the other commissioners understand what's still open, but I don't. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's the thing, yeah. because, um, you know, yeah. This, this was, uh, when was this grant? This was granted a long time ago, right? So the yeah. question is, and um, and so the question is, why isn't there a CFO after almost 17 yeah. years? Because as explained in the letter, it changed hands, and then okay, but they needed to finish construction, and now they've told me that besides the remediation, which has been an ongoing right. thing, all the other work, and I can provide more photographs and confirm that. Yeah. No, but so this, yeah. so this is something where, in order to get a CFO, yeah. you have an architect or an engineer mm -hmm. who has drawings where everything is now ready to, has been filed. Yes. The drawings have been approved. The permit has been issued. The work has been done. Okay. And then there's so a list of items for sign off, right? Yes. For final sign off. What's left? Okay. Right. Okay. I, I believe the remediation is still ongoing because one of the conditions that the BSA put on the previous grant was to take the remediation equipment out. If right. they are done with the remediation, I believe, and, and this letter is dated October 2018, if they were done at that time, 
based on this letter, if this is the case, they could have taken this remediation equipment out, but right. it's still shown on the drone. And so it still I, exists. I, still I confirm that the remediation equipment is still there. It's still there. Yeah. yeah. Is there ongoing but testing? They said that it's over, but they had still haven't removed all the remediation. If, if the remediation is going to. Report, report. What? Does it seem like they're going to? They said that they're going to when I spoke to the lawyer for the site. If, if the remediation is done and you, you're submitting drones to the VSA today, yes. showing this remediation equipment in <coughs> mm -hmm. so you're in violation with the previous grant because the previous grant clearly says take this out as mm -hmm. soon as you're done with the remediation. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it's all a cleaning. It's only October. They It's a process to take it out. They're not just like leaving it. So as, when do you think yeah. they're going to take it? Out? They're intending on doing it as soon as possible. They're working on that. Now. Can, so can is there a timeline? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can get a timeline for the next submission. Can, can you get us a clarification from the environmental yeah. engineer? Yeah, definitely. Why this? It, yeah, it was just hard to do in a single day. Is the remediation done? Yeah. Make this very clear. Yeah. The second yeah. point, if the remediation is done, yeah. why this remediation equipment is still in place when it's going to be taken out? If the yeah. remediation is not done yet, yeah. what is left and what is the time frame for mm -hmm. completion? Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and also for any other work that may be on the site, because I'm not even sure that the remediation has any impact on the CO. So I don't know why it would. Um, because it's part of the grant. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. <coughs> you need to so see the parking, and that's the yeah, I think right. So, right. so the issue is, what other construction work remains on the site that's holding up the C of O? Because yeah. remediation mm -hmm. monitoring wells sometimes are installed for years and years and years, right? In this case, they were. It was something like seventeen years, but um, but that. So that's the question, okay? And I know you can't answer this on the fly, but that's what we yeah. we need to have those answers. Okay, I'll okay. provide permits. Showing what and that'll help us understand what kind of extension um, is reasonable, right? Okay. 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 Um, are there any speakers on this? Um, yes. So those that's the remediation. Right. Was there up to Yeah. Okay. So she said okay. Okay. Uh, so um, um, our compliance officer informs that he has pictures of the remediation um, wells that I mean from the surface area that are obviously still there, and advises us that they're available on our database. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's set a time for submitting the timeline. Really, that's what we're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think this information will take that long. I just think I needed more than a day to get more <laughs> environmental. Okay. Well, so you we, do need a letter from your environmental engineer, so that might take a little more than a day. But yeah. Yeah, it'll take okay. more than a day. But I'm saying I don't need two months. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you don't need two months. Right. Right. Okay. You might have to get. <laughs> um, what about the March 26? Uh, there are currently 19. That's okay. It's a okay. little one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, March 26th for March 6th submission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not that long. All right. Oh, good point. Good point. Is that time for foiling DEC? To obtain or the closed bill, your bill report. Closed bill report. It takes a little. Police. The last time we did it, it was took there. Can you it took back? about a month, Sorry. right? We were just the last time we did one, I think it took about a month. Because one of the suggestions was that your client or you reach out to DEC to obtain the spill report okay. via FOIL. Okay. Um, and this, we were questioning whether a March 6th submission is soon enough or enough time to prove to... I mean, to I don't know what information to we, the environmental engineer already has. So can I try to do the date? And it Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. That's totally okay. Fine. But I just wanted to flag that right. for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll keep it at March 26th for March 6th. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Nine. Appeals calendar, um, continued hearing items, item number 9, 2017-5A through 2017-7A, Shavitz Road, Staten Island. At least, they wanted at least. to adjourn this, right? Was there a date you had in mind? <coughs> I was told that they just got the information they needed to refile at um, DEP, so can it be a June hearing? June hearing? 
Oh, so willingly. <laughs> um, just a June hearing, not a June submission. Um, they think they can get it by the end of May. So, like, so the, but the end of May means June, mid June, mid June, right? yeah. Yeah. So, uh, could the submission date be May twenty second? Mm hmm. Okay, so that would be a June eleventh hearing. Okay. Great. Item number 10, 2017-59A, 3857 Ocean View Avenue, Brooklyn. And um, they intend to put sprinklers. I can ask them to put a note on the first page. Oh, at least full of dare from Eric Blanick. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. um, I can ask them to put a note on the first page that it can say we'll have sprinkle or will be sprinklers or something right. to that effect. Um, so I don't know if fire department had a chance to look at the drawings. Yeah. yeah, we got a letter. Wait, we just a question. Sorry, procedure question. Are we having a hearing? Are we adjourning? You oh. haven't been sworn in. Oh, I thought it was an A case. It's an A case. Oh, sorry, it's, it's an, an A case. case. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. all of that. Sorry. It's, it's, it's not, it's not <laughs> adjourning. Yeah. But it's yeah. not an adjournment. Yeah. yeah. No. Great. Thank you. Oh, sorry, that's not my question. So the fire department so, submitted a letter yesterday. Um, so I guess you can speak about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, John Daly, fire department. I attended yesterday's executive session. I heard your comment. I did have a chance to uh, review it. And as per Chapter 5 of the New York City Fire Code, they are required to sprinkle it. Uh, in addition, I reviewed the DOB uh, this application for this project. <coughs> and they are proposing to add a sprinkler throughout the entire uh, building. So okay. We're good. Great. Great. Thank like you. I said, if you'd like a note on the first page, I can ask them. To uh, that's yes, all these clarification. Yes. Um, there was anything. There's still open DEP, DEP issues. issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. you want a clarification and of the yes. Yeah, so and the so uses. The and, and the uses is. Um, yeah. Like we explained a few hearings ago, they still want to maintain that community facility for community members to meet downstairs. No, but so the 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 original. Yeah. The last we heard, it was some kind of a Russian yeah, something that. or other. Is it still that? Yeah, yeah. that's okay. still the intention. They don't want to do a date. Okay. Okay. All right. So in terms of the DEP open issues, mm. um, well, you have know. to submit to DEP. Yeah, well, they have site to get certification. Approved, yeah. And then they have to give it to me. And then I okay. Should we do the same as the as Sure. Is that fine? Uh, May 22nd. May 22nd submission, June 11th hearing. Speakers. Oh, oh yeah. Are there any speakers Thank on this? You, Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Everyone's watching. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, item number, zoning calendar, continued hearing items. Item number 11, 2016, 1208BZ, 300 East 64th Street, Manhattan. Raise your right hands. Come. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board and to respond honestly to board member questions? Frank Sajak, Ackerman, LLP for the applicant. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, we attended yesterday's uh, executive review session um, and uh, Matthew Schwartz, Barry's New York City Director of Operations is, is here with me uh, to answer any questions. Um, per the letter we submitted uh, in advance of the hearing, uh, we're expecting the Plytech tiles to uh, arrive at the studio this week and they'll be installed this weekend. Uh, and after that time, um, we're actually starting to make the arrangements uh, for the follow-up testing. Uh, that will need to be coordinated between uh, the building management, the commercial landlord, uh, the condo board and tenants, and Barry's, uh, but we'll do so uh, with everyone's uh, agreement on, on the testing protocol. Mm -hmm. um, the, in yesterday's review session, there was just some comment with respect to uh, acoustical limiting. I just want uh, uh, Matthew to just speak to how the system works, who has access to it, um, and, and what they had done since the last hearing, so you have um, that information. Good morning. Um, so immediately, uh, Matthew Schwartz, Director of Operations for Barry's Boot Camp. Um, so immediately after the last hearing in December, we did turn down our entire system at the E64th Street location, and we then had a sound technician come balance the system 
um, and the sound technician has remote access. No one in the studio has access to change any sound in the studio itself. So it all has to go through an outside company to come in and actually do it with their engineers. So they manage it from outside, some sort of computer? Correct. Management. Okay. So, so there's automatically limiters on it that the staff can't modify. Correct. Okay. Uh, and there is an, a limiter for the 5 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. hour, even lower. And then it does go up to the levels that they had initially set for the 8 a.m. and after. And when was this, uh, when was this installed? So the sound system was installed when the uh, studio was first opened, which when? was in uh, 2016. And what was it monitored recently? Uh, so the monitoring happened in December. I, uh, the last hearing was December 11th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the sound was turned down December 11th, and the engineer came on December 13th. And have you received noise complaints since December 13th? Uh, I had received, uh, so I was in direct contact with the tenant. I gave her my phone number, my email. Um, she let me know that she heard something in the week of the holiday time when they were home and the sound was a little quieter within the city. Uh, with that in mind, we actually canceled our morning classes um, and we made sure to instruct the instructors to change their programming, not using weights, making sure that their music was turned down even lower uh, immediately following that. Uh, and that was the last I had heard from the tenant. Is each of the classes, uh, is the morning class and the afternoon class, do they generally both have weights? Yes. And the only difference is the size of the class, the morning class will be larger? Uh, depending on the time of year, that can change. Uh, in the holiday weeks, oftentimes those early morning classes end up being a little lower in volume than... As a norm, though. As a norm, the morning classes are busier usually around the 7 a.m. hour and the 6 p.m. hour are our busiest two times. So are you suggesting that moving forward there won't be weights in the morning classes or only for holiday time? Uh, so we did that as a, like a sign of good faith and as a good neighbor to make sure that they weren't hearing anything extra. We haven't heard since then. Um, we had the, the tenant and I had text back and forth that day and then I, we followed up on the holiday week to check in with her. She had claimed she had not heard anything more at that point. So after the, okay. so after the holiday week, that, that you haven't heard any other further complaints? I have heard nothing from the tenant. And, and you're going to assure that the next testing that happens after the tiles are down is going to be in the morning when it's most sensitive? Right. We will, as Frank mentioned, um, we will make sure that everyone is on board with whenever we do the testing. We are happy to do it whenever. Based on what I, the I, would like. I, I prefer it to be during that that 5:30, 7:30 only because that's the time that the letters had complained about it, right. uh, and also one of the letters stated that they didn't hear anything during the 12:45 to 1 o'clock when she first visited the location. So just for just to be secured that everything uh, that there won't be issues in the future. Correct. I would uh, I would prefer that if we have a we pick a day that there's a large class and we use weights and we see if we remediate the issue. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I just want to be clear. Um, so right now, there aren't any morning classes with weights. Right? No, there are. Oh. So we canceled for the holiday week only. Only holiday um, Based on the request from the tenant just stating that many people in the condominium were home for the holiday weeks okay. in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. So the, the concern about the sound, though, it, this was when you already had these limiters in place that she was able to, the tenant was able to hear the music or whatever, the instructors over the speaker system. So what's the permanent solution for, um, in terms of that? Because that's not related, I don't believe, to the Plytech, right? Um, so what's the permanent solution so that she doesn't hear at 5.30 in the morning or 6 in the morning um, instructors or music? So I think um, in our next testing, uh, there's going to have to be testing again of the sound system uh, and the, the noise and vibration that, that would come from, from weights. Um, so it's no, a, I'm it's not talking dual. about the weights. I, I'm I understand. just talking about yeah. the sound system. And so my point is that there will be testing of the sound system in addition to the weights. Okay. Um, so it will be sort of comprehensive testing to make sure that uh, nothing, neither noise uh, nor vibration are uh, encroaching into to her uh, residence. Okay, because... Um, and it, 
and sorry, just to, to uh, finish the the, the previous um, report that was submitted. That um, I believe the testing was done late November, early December. Um, that testing indicated that the the, uh, the the sound system was not audible. Um, so we'll have to work with the tenant to make sure we're we're narrowing down on, on what it is she's hearing, um, and that's going to require the coordination and. Um, Cooperation of, of all parties involved. But, but that test was done at one o'clock in the afternoon as opposed to when the ambient noise levels are much higher. That's correct. Right? So, right. and you're more likely to hear it in the morning when everything is very, very silent, you know, to the extent New York. That's my understanding. Silent. So, again, the, the testing will occur at a time when that, that ambient noise is, is lower so that we can sort of more accurately um, understand what, what it is that's, that's encroaching. Okay. And then um, I know you're uh, not the testing engineers, but um, a lot of the questions yesterday had to do with the idea of using drops at six inches above the ground, where I know a lot of people who work out who can't possibly put a weight only six inches above the ground. Right. So right? they have um, to drop from 12 inches or 18 inches because they can't touch their toes with the weight or they can't and their knees adequately, that kind of thing. So, so I'd, I'd like to do two things. I'd like to have Matthew just speak to the operations and how the weights are used in, in the gym, and then also just note that um, the testing protocol, again, will, uh, will be developed and discussed uh, with the sound consultant uh, and the, the tenants to ensure that uh, what they're testing is capturing the actual operations and is consistent with um, you know, with, with what's going on in the gym. And, and I believe that we'll, we'll most likely have to have that sound consultant here uh, at the next hearing to explain their findings uh, to the board. But um, I'll have Matthew just speak to what's actually happening in the studio with respect to this. Uh, so with respect to the weight usage in our studios, the way that Barry's workout is, is lower weights with higher reps. It's not like the extreme like Olympic lifting of the higher right. weight sets. Um, and it's all done on a bench or on the floor uh, the bench is a step aerobics bench, um, not a proper like chest bench that you would see in a normal gym. Uh, so it's low to the ground, um, and the weights are done in ways that are not lifted above the head and dropped, or lifted to a deadlift level, to hip level and dropped. They're all done in movements that are lower to the ground. So, Yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm also thinking about classes I've seen where a lot of people drop the weights from a lot higher than six inches, you know, from 12 or 18 inches. I, I know that it's not the same thing that we talk about in other gyms where you're throw, throwing it from over your head. But the, but the issue is the sound drop is really based on a, a, a so, sort of soft thump as opposed to a more extreme, let's say someone's holding a, I don't know, two 20 pound weights and that's a little much for them, right? or they're just not that agile in the <coughs> building part. So they're dropping it from higher than six inches. And I'm concerned that using six inches is a very low bar, you know, so to speak. Um, I, as, as Frank said, I think that we can, of, of course, test that from multiple heights. Yeah. I think the height testing was done based on the bench level as most of the exercises are done laying or, or kneeling on the benches themselves. Okay. All right. So I think it would be clearer if, if the testing included 12 and 18 inch drops, unless 18 is really never <coughs> happens, but 12 likely happens. I think what the report will also do is, is really flesh out and explain the methodology and, and the choice of, of the different drop levels. Um, and, and we can, you know, review Barry's operations and uh, with, with the, the sound consultant determine whether it needs to be 6, 12, and 18 or just 6 and 12. Mm -hmm. And please include the weight of, like, you generally, what, what weights, what, what's the highest dumbbell that you guys have in a class? Uh, the highest dumbbell typically used is around 35 to 40 pounds. Oh. And there's no barbells, are there? No. No, it's all free-weighted dumbbell. And those would be done on a bench or also while moving? Um, done on a bench. So every, uh, the way that the layout of the class works, everyone has a specific spot that they are staying in um, so that we can have a fixed workout space so the instructor has space to demo moves and also so that there isn't uh, an overflow of people just to keep the class limited in size. So uh, it, it'd be helpful if you, uh, like, like your counsel said, going through the program with the sound uh, attenuator so that they have an understanding of the level of weight that should be tested and, and I concur with the chair that uh, other heights need to, to be considered because frankly 
the, the, the bench is higher than six inches and the extension is higher than six inches. Right. Okay. All right. And are there any other questions from the commissioners? Are there any speakers on this? This is Barry's boot camp. I realized in her email that she said she was coming in the afternoon. I try to reach her on the cell phone. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. I'll take we'll up. we'll let her. Yeah, I'll take responsibility. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Right. So, are we gonna? I think we're gonna keep the record open for her to speak. Yeah, more than keep the record open. We're. You mean and let her speak but later speak today? Yeah. Yes. If she comes this afternoon, yes, because. We didn't arrange the hearing to meet her schedule. We don't normally. Um, so, uh, but in addition to which, there needs to be additional testing after the Plytech is installed and so on. So that's expected to be installed this month, right? Correct, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and then we're hoping to, to do the testing as soon as possible afterwards um, once the, the uh, tiles are in place. Okay, so we could put this on for... Do we have room at the end of March? If 20th. Okay, that'll work. Is you watch on the calendar? So, um, uh, next year it'll be March 26th, submission date of March 6th. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 12, 2016, 42, 40 BC, 1231 3rd Avenue, Manhattan. Raise your hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to board member questions? Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Frederick A. Becker. Uh, we attend an executive session uh, with regard to the hearing. Uh, the hearing notice, the notice, I should say, the hearing notice just talks about a public hearing. It doesn't talk about adjournment or new hearing or anything of that notice, that nature. We tried to post it ourselves. We were told by the managing agent they would post it, and we had no access to the building, and they posted us and sent us the photograph that it was posted with an email. That is what you received. So, so the that's the gym that posted it. No, the, Who, the, the building, building, the building, the managing building agent, management Plaza Plaza Management Post. Chaim Cohen of Plaza Management posted the posted the notice and sent me a confirmation as well as the photograph which I sent to you, together with a copy of that notice, and that is how it was done. We offered to do it. They said, we want to do it. We will do it. And they're the managing agent. I can't okay. tell them what right. they should, how to manage their building. Uh, have you submitted a copy of this email that you got from the management? No. I said, so notified, said it on a letter that I, this is, was sent to us by that. I mean, I can do that. But I said a letter, this was sent, posted by that. And I put it on my letter <coughs> saying I Excuse didn't. Excuse me. They did it. So. Okay. And together with a copy of the notice. I mean, it's a, that's all. Okay, so going forward on these cases, please don't use the posting, for posting the notice to neighbors that goes in the mail. Create your own posting that indicates clearly that there's a hearing on a certain date and that um, comments can be submitted to submit um, oh. in writing, okay? okay? Because the thing that's posted there in, um, implies that there's a form you have to fill out okay. and then and the form's not there. Okay. I, I can also, okay. I'll take that language out, but it does talk about when the hearing is and to submit and all that. I'll take it the language about the notice of objection. No problem. Okay. Um, I, there was an issue of an opening. My apologies on the, we'll take it as January. You know, some of the papers just, it's been going on for so long and so many notice of comments, so we apologize for the mistake. Uh, so I'll, it is I'll, January? We'll take January. It's January versus February, we'll take the January. Um, in terms of the noise issues, we did in our initial submission show uh, what we had done in terms of uh, insulation, uh, acoustical insulation measures. Those plans were originally filed with the original application. I just resubmitted and wanted to give since it was a concern of the board, I just wanted to expound upon further 
what had been done, what issues had been done, when it had been done, et cetera, so that the board would have a fuller understanding and a better record of what had been done. But the, we did show the acoustical uh, items the, in our first submission, in our, the original application submission. Right, but it says that there have been, so in your recent submission, you, there, there are obviously ongoing noise issues. Well, um, there and were so at one we, point. So is there someone from the gym here? No, I'm no. here from the gym. So, so that's, so I'm confused. So your recent submission states that there are, there have been noise issues and then not explaining, so what's the status now? The status is that we haven't had any issues in the past several months. Uh, we spoke to the managing agent, they haven't heard anything. I was in touch with the managing agent just, you know, recently and they haven't heard anything further from their tenants and we, this is, so we have no issues. And we did the posting, so if there had been issues, it's a small building, people would have seen it. So the answer is everything is fine as of this moment and has been for quite a period of time. Are there any speakers for 1231 Third Avenue, which is New York Sports Club? No? Okay. Uh, in your last submission, you had also stated that the boxing classes were stopped and the programs were changed and the windows were closed, and that is the current condition. That is the current condition, and it's staying that way. Yes. So, I guess that's... I mean, the window being open was a one-shot deal that happened during a summer month, and it was, as soon as it was, you know, found out, it was effectively you know, closed. So what I'm trying to understand, it would have been helpful if you brought your, the, the operator of the gym. Well, I've been in touch with the managing agent on... No, 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 it's unrela unrelated. So in terms I mean, of... I mean, I'm sorry, I've been in touch with Heather Allen, who is the general manager of the, of the club. gym. And right, we, but we'd like to speak to the... Because they know their gym, right? Well, we, right? this has been a, it's been a major, this was a, a major issue of concern. <coughs> After the last hearing, I reached out to her because I wasn't aware of anything. I reached out to the managing agent. We had many emails and correspondence back and forth, and I'm speaking fully for them. So that I don't believe it's well, anything but she, she can tell you. So you're can. a fact witness, right? But you don't have the facts about the gym because you don't run the gym. So when you come to these hearings without the operator of the gym, it's difficult for us to get the answers, right? So I, what I wanted to know, please don't interrupt. What I wanted to know was um, the letter that you submitted um, seems to indicate that they had to, as Commissioner Shonda mentioned yesterday, scale down the operations in order to address the noise issues. Right. So, um, and if scaling down is how they're addressing the noise, that's not a permanent solution because one, what happens when they scale back up the operations <laughs> to be more what people want in the gym, you know? Clientele come in and they say, we want. This, this is, the, I can speak to that, because we've discussed that. With, I've discussed that with her. The answer is, as far as they are concerned, this is a permanent solution. We do not want to go back to the status quo ante. We do not want to have further issues. Um, we stop them. They've been stopped for months and months and months and months and they have no intention, whether requested or otherwise, it's not happening again. They so they write, wouldn't object to us having a condition of approval that certain kinds of activities wouldn't occur in the gym? Yes, at this, on this level, there's a, a sub-level. They're happy to, if you want no boxing, I've had this in previous application and with under in previous boards where we've had not we've had limitations on activities in certain locations within the gym if you want to say no boxing on the ground floor fine I mean, we've, we've done it on 23rd street i've done it in other places yes happy to accommodate. so the source of the noise complaints was the boxing yeah, yeah. I don't how did you really identify that? that well there were also Be heavy because bags. it's some of the box sometimes the bag is hung from a beam Mm -hmm. And when it's hung from a beam, we know from experience that there are vibrations. And so the this is travels. heavy bags. It's not. This is not like little guy. It's a. It's a ones. heavy bag. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So have the heavy bags been relocated? They've stopped using them. In that so they're still hanging. There. No, they're not there. They've they've removed the, they've, the heavy bags are long gone. Okay. And boxing is not offered. And 
So they didn't do an independent identification of the noise complaint being related to the heavy bags. We're just going from past experience that no, no, this there were noise complaints, and that was it was determined that the boxing was problematic, and they were that the boxing was stopped. And when was that stopped? <coughs> several months ago. I and there has been no complaints in the last several months. Yeah, not that we're aware of. So when you say boxing, what you're talking about is hitting heavy, these heavy, heavy bags. bags. Okay, not, so I want to be clear because boxing is a thing that's <coughs> not a ring. No, no, we're, we're not ring, talking. No, we're not talking. They don't have a ring. This is not this okay. gym. No, this is boxing. We, if you want to pro prohibit the placement of heavy bags on the ground floor, we are comfortable with that condition. Well, why the ground floor? How do we know that? Well, if it's in the cellar, it's not. It's uh, it's below our space. It's not. In, it's not going to travel up through another floor. But you're proposing not to provide that program at all, right? You've eliminated it. We've eliminated it as of now. Okay. So then... So you want to eliminate it? Eliminate it. Fine. Okay. Without yeah. discussing with your client, you're yes. okay with that? Yes. Um, also in your statement, you had stated the heavy weights are not being used in classes during early morning or early evening classes. So, and that's also a permanent solution? Yes. And and UGI balls, I don't know what they are. Ooh, an Oogie ball, I, I had to look it up myself. The Oogie balls are the, the large rubber balls. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones that are around this big, you sit right. on, bounce on, bend over, do whatever they you make do. They noise? Well, okay. Oogie. No. I mean, or whatever they pronounce, but that's what it is. I, I Googled it myself. But yeah, why do they make noise? Yeah. Maybe they're heavy. Really heavy. But those aren't medicine no, balls. They are. No, they are medicine not. Medicine balls are heavy. Oogie balls are those little cushiony things. Yeah, yeah. the mm. therapists use it for a lot of. Whatever stretching. it is, they, whatever activities they were doing with them, that also created some form of noise. So they stopped using them on the first floor. Okay, level. so uh, heavy bags, oogie balls, and weights. These are only three things that created noise. Yes. And your client's comfortable with not continuing any use of the, those three things? On the ground floor. On the ground floor. On the ground floor. Well, Has there been use of it on the, in the cellar in the last no, few months? No, there's been no boxing. They have used the oogie balls and there are some light weights. It, it's not a, a muscle gym, it's a small gym, so there have been hand weights for the most. And that's only been on the cellar? <laughs> yes. And since this, for the last few months, this has been used on the cellar and there haven't been any complaints? Yeah. Okay. We really are talking about no oogie balls? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I I've always hate, had a thing against you people. I, I hate to go with something just based on experience. There is no testing, there is no expert witness, there is no even a letter from an expert saying that the source of the noise was identified as this. Right. And, and now it's gone, so let's do it. At, right. at least we need to get something in writing like that, even from the operator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't even have anything from the operator. We, yeah, yeah I, I agree that I feel really uncomfortable about this because we can't speak to the operator of the gym even about their experiences. Nor can we find any conclusion as to any way to see that this, the uh, complaints, conclude that the complaints were related to these things besides a statement that they were. Well, we, if I may, we know that these activities we, we did some noise testing upstairs. We mentioned that, long, Ling, long, Lindsay mentioned that. We know that since we have stopped these activities, there have been no complaints. So there is a cause and there's an effect. Did you submit the testing yeah. material? I don't know if we had submitted the testing I don't material. think so. I don't think so. I don't so. believe yeah. so. And even, even if it was submitted, if you've done testing before, you have to do testing after. It's not just we did testing, we have some issues. And you know what? We did X, Y, and Z. It sounds like no complaint. We've mm -hmm. got bring the testing guy back, have him retest, and give you a piece of paper saying that based on the retesting, the previously monitored issues are not present. Well, and the, and the other part of it is the testing reports always have a recommendation. So we don't know whether they, they complied with the recommendation from the testing engineer. Right? They always say something. Install padding. Well, they, they, what they did was they, this, the, I, can, I will submit the report. It was dated March 7, 2017 from Longman Lindsay. Thereafter, the gym was closed. And thereafter, we did column enclosures. We did the sound separation, all of which was shown on plans. So we did, we responded to what they suggested. 
Okay. So the, the testing identified the issues and then recommended an installation of, of sound attenuation which, measures, which, which we, was done, which was done, and which put was, on the plans, and, which was, and the plans were submitted. Correct. So if we get the testing results, the report, and we look at it and we see that, I, I believe that may, makes us like feel better. Mm. But so far, we don't have the testing. We don't have the reports. We don't know that. The, what was done is an implementation of the reports. We're just going on your say so as opposed to your submission, and we don't have we don't have the uh, gym management here to tell us about their activities. How many set of plans were submitted to to us? Like, do you, did you submit the plans before and the plans after? No. No, we. No, they're the as there's they're a, the, as built plans. Okay. Okay. Which showed uh, acoustical materials. And dimensions and specifications. So we got the plans up for hey, the chief. look at the sixth page. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Page six, 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 seven. Okay. All right. So I asked if there were speakers. Okay. So we need the testing reports. What work was done in response to the testing reports in, you know, to explain to us what work was done in response to the testing reports. The, um, and so it accompanies maybe the drawings that you've already submitted. If the drawings have already been submitted, then you say the drawings dated such and such, which were submitted on such a date, so we can find them, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then we need something from the testing engineer. Uh, you, you know what, regarding this, I, I don't want to be like very tough on this. If, if you've done testing before and you have somebody who prepared the plans for you, and this somebody is a licensed person and can give you a letter saying that he looked at the testing results, he addressed the recommendations, and in his opinion, the plans address the issue, mm -hmm. and it's good to go. Well, that would come actually from the testing engineer. <coughs> testing engineer would say, based on my recommendations and reviewing the plans, this is following yeah, my recommendations. Yeah, but what I'm saying, they don't, uh, I don't want to like force them to redo the testing. If the engineer believes that he addressed the recommendations of the testing company, and these plans will work well, that's fine mm -hmm. for me. So yeah. when you say engineer, you mean the one who did the drawings? The or one you mean who did the, one the drawings who did the and the one who did the testing? We can get a letter from yeah. Longman Lindsay that would, I think, would address yeah. the commissioner said is, which said we recommended on pursuant to our letter, we reviewed the plans prepared by the architect, blah, 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 and they addressed our issues. I think I'm correct, Commissioner? Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Appreciate that. All right. Okay, so... Um, Put this again. And uh, what do we have? Let's do April. My day seems to be the 26th. Well, that's only if we have room still on the 26th. Okay, that's all right. So March 26th, so we can date of March 6th. Okay. And I will bring the manager next time as well. Okay. The chair. Do you, um, are the tenants going to be notified again, or? So the tenants apparently were notified so there is that strange photo that shows that right. there was a posting in the lobby um, and nobody came um, and we didn't see any submissions but I do have to say the submissions weren't really encouraged on that posting. That. So are we suggesting that to be re-noticed? I'm, I'm always for encouraging outreach. I, I, I don't know. I, I would know ask what that others think. I, I'd ask that there. Renotify. Renotify. All right. With so, a, a more proper notification. Yeah. So I'll to be clear about the notification, you you know what we're looking for, right? Is to be clear that if you have a comment, you submit a comment to submit, mm -hmm. not that you have to show up here or fill out no, a form it's and the, notarize it. It said it said you can submit. And it no. said you can show up. We. It, no, we, no, no. Showing up, people. You know, people are taking a day off from work to fine. come here. I'll, so take it, out, I'll take out the objection consent language. Okay. And other Make sure it's clear. Try to we, try to work with us on this. Like Don't we have a sample, have a sample. we can give them? Can we have a sample. I, I, I've asked for that last time. It wasn't sent to me. So uh, if it could be sent to me now, it would be appreciated. Okay. I wasn't aware that you'd ask me for that. Sure. So, so he's not re-notifying the tenants, but we're not we're not sending him a new hearing notice. No. No. Okay. I just want to be clear. I want to make sure. Right. Mar Muriel doesn't. So right. just, just just to make this clear, if you submit to us a signed and sealed from the testing company that they reviewed the plans, 
they believe that they address the recommendations to tackle mm. previous issues, monitor, and in their opinion, that this tackling is sufficient to eliminate these issues, that would be enough. Okay. So the sign and seal, it depends on what kind of a it's person not, they I are. They, they sometimes aren't um, licensed engineers. You know, I don't know what, like a sound consultant, I don't actually know whether those are people who have seals. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know who the sound engineer people are. They could not be not licensed professional engineers, but they're sound specialists, if, right? So I don't want to force it to be signed and sealed if the person isn't a PE. No, I'm not saying a PE. Yeah, okay. Uh, they're, they're a guy not. who's licensed to do his work. Right, but a, a person who's licensed doesn't necessarily have a seal. If those are PEs, architects, like... Like a planner, for instance, the professional planner, they don't have seals, mm -hmm. right? So there they have all sorts of designations on their title, but they don't have seals. So I, I just don't know what, what an acoustical engineer's training and seal capability is, whether they are PEs or whether they're something else. So if they're a PE, it needs to be signed and sealed. It's not a, they're not PEs. Do you want an affidavit? It doesn't need to be an affidavit. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, the person who signed this is not a PE. They're so they're so what I call it. it won't be I believe that's fine. We're gonna put a condition either way, and yeah, if, we if will there put is non-compliance, we yes. can bring them back. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. We have dates. Good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number 13, 2017, 131 BC, 7785 Jerry seconds. Street, Brooklyn. That's it. Raise your right hands. Do you want? Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board, and to respond honestly to board member questions? Okay. Good sign in. Good morning, Commissioners. David Rosenberg of Sheldon Lobel PC on behalf of the applicant. We attended yesterday's review session, and just to respond to some of the board's comments, you know, obviously, as noted in the review session, we have reduced the height of the rear yard structure from the proposed 37 foot 8 to 30 feet. Um, with respect to the chair's comments about the residential elevator, um, the initial plan was to have this as a lock controlled elevator using access code to be able to access specific floors. Um, in speaking with the fire department informally, um, they've advised that it is better for them to make sure that the elevator has the ability to stop on all floors, but the applicant is entirely willing to commit to locking the elevator doors on the second and third floors to make sure that they're for residents only, not for community facility use. And there will be signs posted that the elevators do not stop on these floors, and, but that the option that if the fire department ever needed the access, they would be able to open it. I'll ask them to, I'll ask fire department to comment on that. Okay. Um, and with respect to, unfortunately, the project architect could not be here today because of illness, but um, I asked him to clarify with respect to the lockable door at the mikva area, between the mikva area and the, the mechanical rooms, the meter rooms, it will be locked. There will be a, an alarm door there that's locked with a panic bar that would set up an alarm for emergency egress, but it would be locked for users of the mikva. In terms of building maintenance, it is one actual maintenance company that will be maintaining the entire building, both the community facility portion and the residential portion of this building, and they're going to be the only ones who have access to that space. So wait, so the locked door, it's not shown yet on the plans, right? No, we can revise the yeah. plans to make sure to clarify that it's a locked door. No, but I don't know that there's a door. No, the door in the corridor in the cellar, there's no door. I think when we were discussing it, now that we know that this laundry room is going to be mm -hmm. only for MIQA purposes, yes. the residents don't need to access uh, the cellar space. And we were suggesting maybe having a door where the laundry wall and the restroom wall kind of, um, yeah. you know, the, that. Yeah. 
Um, we can put a door there. I'd also note, though, that but to get to the sprinkler, uh, these meter rooms, there is another door there before you get to those two rooms. No. No. You go down the staircase or you take the elevator, let's say, and then it gives you free access to the mikvah. So the whole point is to put a door. So right opposite the, the stairwell door, C. So mm -hmm. there's that corridor that's coming out of the wash area um, towards the elevator. So just put a door there. So that way, and that's only for emergency exit. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. There's a sign saying emergency exit. So that, and then the other elevator uh, provides the clear access to the sprinkler and electric meter and other things. That Which should not to the residential. Mm -hmm. yeah, that should not be a problem. And not being the architect, I can't represent that. That's not going to create any new right. access issues. But right. assuming that that's not a problem, we will revise the plans to include a locked door there. All right. As Vice Chair Chanda mentioned, that with respect to the laundry room, the questions that were there, the laundry room that's in the cellar specifically for mikvah purposes, the residential units above have their own. Um, and then with respect to the question, um, to the chair's question about peak occupancy, it, the number is, it's 435 peak for weekday morning. That, unfortunately, um, the chair's comment, I think, was that it seems like a lot of people. And it is, but that's the peak number of what, of what this is designed for. Will this be the case every mo day, Monday through Thursday, 52 weeks a year? I don't know if that will necessarily be the case, but this was designed to understanding that during the busier times of year, especially around the high holidays, that that is what the peak occupancy would be. So it's supposed to be representing high holiday time? It's, it's to represent what peak occupancy would be. For the, the synagogue is building for its programmatic need, has to build for what it expects, for what it reasonably expects its maxim maximum occupancy to be currently and for the next five years. And that's what this is. <coughs> Okay. And um, then I, um, so Vice Chair Chanda brought up the 2009 case regarding the synagogue and bar park. Um, so that one, the resolution is not particularly, it doesn't really talk about the relationship of the use between the congregants and the mikvah, but I think, and one, Mr. Lobel, who was the attorney on that matter, is here who can talk about it a little bit more. But also, and I think this was brought up yesterday during the executive session, that the space in the mikvah isn't really what's driving the waivers here. And that it's what's pushing the waivers here is really the first floor prayer, prayer rooms, which we talk about. And the programmatic need of having those between near the having the prayer rooms near the mikvah is what's really addressed by the 2009 case. But the prayer rooms mm -hmm. arguably could have been in the cellar. So to say that it's not driving the waivers isn't really Accurate. Well, there's no well, well, windows in those right. prayer I think what I was trying to get at is that even if we reduce the footprint of the mikvah, mm -hmm. um, I thought it programmatically... Right, that's if the yeah. mikvah's right. there. If With the mikvah being there. Mm -hmm. If the mikvah is not there, that's a different question. Then you can have the prayer room all the way down. And Obviously. That, yes, so um, let me just so, so rephrase that. I just that. want to be clear. I, yeah, that's that the mikvah is see. certainly a programmatic need of the synagogue, to have that mikvah as, religious requirement, as part of the religious worship, to have the mikvah. So yes, the, for, the mikvah is driving the waivers insofar as if the mikvah weren't in the cellar, we could ha theoretically have prayer rooms down the cellar and bring down the height. But that's not the scenario we're talking about. In any case, the mikvah is going to be there as part of a programmatic need. And even talking about reducing it slightly, and maybe moving one of the offices from the second floor down there doesn't actually bring down the issue of the waiver in the back because we're not actually shrinking the floor plates. Right. All right, then there was the other question about materials. Finished materials on the side walls are not shown. Okay, we'll have the architect address that. In other words, the architect will show that on the drawing. Yes. Okay. Um, and then also, well, so the architect needs to do it. There were other comments, right, about uh, the la dimensions on the section mm -hmm. don't match. Um, and, uh, okay, the cellar door. Okay. <coughs> Are there any speakers on this? Yeah, yeah. 
but I, any to be any members of the public on this one. No, this is what's the address here? This is 7785 Gary Street. No. All right. So, um, <coughs> fire department. Just um. Good morning, Dale, <coughs> Fire Department. Good morning. Um, so the the question has to do with um, the Mr. Rosenberg said that in speaking to fire department, the issue was we have two elevators in this building, one that's <coughs> only for the synagogue yes. and one that's for the residential building. Right. And we were trying to prevent residents from interacting with the users of the synagogue, right? Right. So we, we had talked about having the elevator have no stops in the synagogue <coughs> level that are elevator, that are, sorry, residential elevator. And yeah. Okay. Um, he did. <coughs> Was I he was speak, speaking with earlier, and um, we because that elevator serves the entire building, we need access to, for that elevator to go on all floors. There is the fireman service key uh, in the elevator that will, once we um, put our, our key in the 1620 key, it would override all command and make us and allow us to stop on the, the synagogue uh, floors and the residential floors. I know he also asked me on the corridor side of the elevator if they can <coughs> close the opening. And I advised him he can't, that's not permitted. They can lock, put a, provide a, a kid lock on the corridor side. Sorry, on the corridor side of elevator. Of the, oh, that's the residential lobby. Mm -hmm. No, so for example, So if you look at the second floor and the oh, third yeah. floor. The second, the third floor. The second and the third floor, where the elevator would directly act open to the synagogue. Right. Well, they can, yes, so on the, uh, on the synagogue side, they can provide a key lock on the door. Mm -hmm. So in that, we, on this floor, the fire department, we can put our key in to unlock it mm -hmm. and enter the elevator. And only fire department has that. That is correct. Well, the, the fire, the, whoever the building maintenance. Super, the maintenance crew, they are allowed to have a 1620 key to be able to do maintenance if they mm. ever need to be done. But there is a, a standard key lock called 1620, mm -hmm. and that the locksmith all know that. And uh, so we will be able to open it from the tenant side. Mm -hmm. of the elevator or okay. on the um, elevator side. So I'm just a little bit trying to understand how, how this works with the fire department. Sure. Um, so we, there's two elevators and the issue is that the um, fire department does use the elevator? Yes, we do. Okay, and so, um, and that the idea of only being able to gain access via elevator to one portion of the building and then having to switch over to another side to gain access through another portion isn't desirable. No, it's not. Okay. And since this elevator serves all the entire building, this is the primary elevator we would use. Right. And again, we do, the, the elevators can be programmed not to stop on that, those floors, the synagogue floor. Right. But our key overrides that command that we can stop on that floor mm -hmm. and go from there. Now, it's not only operation that has just the key, it's also EMS. So in the event the EMS oh. needs to uh, go, as well as the um, uh, private EMS services. I know the, the Jewish community has their own. They have a 1620 key. So mm -hmm. it's, it's easy for them also to, uh, to access the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay, understand. Okay, thank you. So okay. maybe we should have an <coughs> Yeah. So yeah, so there should be, thank you very much. Okay. There, so the architect needs to add a note on the plan to that extent, to the extent that the elevator will have keyed locks from the outside 1620 lock? Correct. Right. Right. 1620 lock. Okay, so and to indicate that on each floor, that's not the residential floors. And so it's line. the cellar, the second and the third floor. Correct. Cellar, second and third, yeah. <coughs> okay. 
All right. Um, so I don't know if there's so we still have open WRP issues. Yeah, there's one back and forth between the applicant team and the Department of City Planning regarding whether or not this the subject property um, can adequately answer for one of the waterfront resiliency program consistency goals mm -hmm. because um, the condition with part of the part of the rear portion of the building is in zone X without a design flood elevation. So there's no way to calculate that wouldn't result in adverse impacts on the uses in the building. No way to calculate. Sorry, so what? As, <laughs> I, as I understand it, the issue is that um, to enable to calculate whether or not we're consistent with 6.2 requires starting off from the design flood elevation. And, and, the, and that has impacts on the uses that are below it. Here, there is no actual design flood elevation because of this, because we're in zone X. Um, city planning had initially suggested using a different design flood elevation from a nearby zone, but that would impact the uses on the ground floor and the cellar. So then... So there's some back and forth that we're hoping to resolve. We're going to try to call this week, mm -hmm. like from the staff level. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, then. So we should give some more time for some back and forths, but we need to get the uh, drawings amended. And I think that was really it, right? Um, yeah, it's just amending the mm -hmm. drawings as we discussed and then clearing up the WRP issues, right? So uh, what can we do? We could do <coughs> how about April hearing. Yeah, April 3rd. No, sorry, what is that? Eight. This one has to be four. Oh. We could do it. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have a lot for us to check. So. Okay, um, so next hearing we could do April 9th with a submission March 20th. Okay. So in your submission <laughs> letter, in your cover letter, can you please be very specific about what's been changed on the drawings? Mm -hmm. And now I'm going back to what will eventually become standard for us. The changes that are made to the drawings need to be bubbled and the drawings need to be dated and the there's one set of bubble drawings and one set of clean drawings in case that's the drawing that we end up accepting okay mm -hmm. um, so and it's essential that it be bubbled and that on your cover letter you indicate um, what the changes mm -hmm. are and you're not bubbling them please the architect bubbles them and tells mm -hmm. you what the changes are okay, okay or tells us, actually. A letter from the architect is the, really the best. Architect bubbles, architect provides a list of changes, then you just attach your list to your submission letter. Okay? okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number 14, 2017-244BZ, 2208 Baller Avenue, the Bronx. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to board member questions? Okay, so please uh, sign it. Do we ask for any speakers? If we have another case issue. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Thank you. And I swear. The Good morning, oh. <clears throat> Eugene Pillman, on behalf of the Co-op City Baptist Church. Um, we, attended your, we attended your executive session, and uh, we made great efforts to have the surveyor come here, but they could not attend, so they provided a letter <laughs> okay. clarifying, clarifying the survey. Could we pass that down? As stated in the letter, all elevations on the October 2018 survey are in NABD 88. The additional notes were included to provide clarity for different end users, especially the Bronx Datum and et cetera. But um, as we affirmed in point one on the passed out letter and highlighted in bold, all elevations are in NAVD um, 88. Okay. The notes were intended to clarify, and all they did was confuse because they're conflicting. The notes, it, it might be standard notes that carried over um, onto this document. Uh, that's a possibility, but. Regardless, um, 
they vehemently affirm that all elevations are in NAVD 88 and that any confusion is due to excess information for user. But did, did we get a revised plan? Revised survey? Yeah, revised no. plans. Plans, not yeah, survey. Yeah, we did. Oh. Yes. Well, I don't, I don't know. If we got revised plans as of yesterday? No. No. Yeah. The last that's, that's what he's that's asking. Question, yes. No, no, so it's a different no. question, right? So the, the, the no that's on the plan, it, it contradicts itself. And I, I, I have copied the note, and it says all elevations shown here are referred to the North American vertical datum of 1988 in AVD 88 at each level to elevations. Yeah, that's that's my, my note. At each elevation, you gave us, or the architect gave us two elevations. Two numbers. Could you clarify that, Victor, please? So I, I'm not sure which one is which. Uh, the NAVD. State your name for the record. Sir. Victor Bonnie Wilson, architect. Um, the elevations that we gave are height elevations. So the base and the subsequent elevations. Is that what you're referring to? There are two different numbers, two different elevations. One of on one of them it says EL, which I understand. Elevation. Elevation. The other one is. It, it's an elevation too. So which one of these is the NAVD 88? Sorry. They're I'm both NAVD 88. Which drawing are you Can you tell us which, which drawing you're looking at yes, so we can second. follow along? Thank you. Thanks. What page am I on? Hold up. In the drawing date, I'm assuming that was the submission, 24. It's not. We are looking for the plans. You look at the section of the two elevations on P10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, there are two numbers, 15, 6, and where it says two sidewalk, okay. the east flood diagram. Oh, there's one in parentheses and one not yes. in parentheses. Yes. Yeah. How can we differentiate between these? It should be a legend so specifying <coughs> which one is which. So there's I think the 15 parentheses is the NAVD, right? No. Yeah, there's 15 feet 6 inches, which is minus 3 feet from the main elevation. Is that your concern? Yeah, so the 3 feet is measured off of what? It's measured off of the main elevation. What do you mean the it's main just to, elevation? It's just to give you a reference oh, that so it's it, lower. Ah, but ah. we can take it off if you want to, if we just want to use the... Um, no, no, the, no, the, it's only to make okay. it clear. It's so just to give you a sense that, okay, it's below a... a um, so when you say base. the main elevation, you're setting ground at zero. Exactly. And ground is um, NABD 88... That's 18, correct. 18... 6, or I can't see it, but 18, 18 something. 18 foot 6 inches. That's so, correct. And the reason that we know it's NABD 88 is the note on the bottom... Right. As all elevations shown here refer to North American vertical datum of 88, and then in parentheses it says NAVD 88. So you could read that both ways. You could say everything in parentheses is in NAVD 88, or right. what you're saying is that the sort of abbreviated terminology is NAVD 88. I think that's why it's a little confusing. The, 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 the right way to express NAVD 88 elevations is to write this. L for example, 12. When it says EL12, that means elevation 12. If you put it in any different form, you have to provide explanations for that. And the, the reason I, I mention this is because 
both of the forms that are given here, that parentheses 5, 10, and then negative 12 feet, not 8 inches, both of them is not the standardized form to express <coughs> an elevation. We will take it off. No, but so, it, 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 no, 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 don't take it off, but so, because I, I don't know that we off. need. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So let's continue because I don't want to mess with the yeah, drawing. No, no, just provide an explanation. Yeah, 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 just a second. Let's hear the rest of the case because I don't want this to have to come back if it's only about something where I actually, I have to admit that I understood because when I looked at ground floor and I see ground floor is zero, then I know he's setting zero so we know how tall the building is above grade. Because I'm actually much more interested in no, and I need that number. I want to know that the building is, for example, that was my question, is the building 35 feet high? That's right. Or is it 44, six mm -hmm. above grade? Yep. And I was aware because I could see ground floor elevation is zero, right? That's right. I know that it's also at NAVD. My concern was I wasn't sure whether the 18.6 that he's showing as NAVD 88 was actually NAVD 88 because the survey is so confusing and I didn't know if therefore you were doing a, a, a conversion or whether you were just using the number that was shown on the survey. That, that was my concern. Right. But I, I don't want to require drawings to be amended if, we're, if we have nothing else to do, okay? okay? Yeah. So let's just keep going and see if there's anything else that needs to be added to the drawings. Thank okay? you. I would also like to address the width of the sidewalk. Um, we've made efforts to contact the Department of Transportation. We sent several emails and I spoke to Mr. Bricio Talisic, who's the director of the Builders Waiver Program. He informed me, I mean, um, he informed me that they have no issue with it as proposed. And when I asked him to provide something in writing, he said they have to send it to their GIS unit in order to map out the, uh, the street and the bus turns and radius. And then they'll send me something in writing. But we have not yet received it. But in response to the board's executive session, we've actually conducted a, a pedestrian analysis um, using the proposed uh, five foot seven width on the eastern side of the portion. So uh, if Mr. Andrew Villari uh, could address that, that current width, um, even though there's actually a program at DOT, it's called the Community Facility Sidewalk, sidewalk uh, Expansion Program. And it's certain community facility uses, they actually allow them to increase their uh, sidewalk presence in order to accommodate, I guess, a higher traffic or certain uses. Um, you know, we're trying to confirm in writing that they're okay with it, but in the event that they are not, our position is that the proposed five foot seven sidewalk width will be sufficient to um, to address. Thank you, Andrew Valeri, Stonefield Engineering and Design, 584 Broadway, Suite 310. Um, I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of New York, um, and as as Eugene has mentioned, we did do an analysis of the sidewalk along the. I guess that's the north side of, of the sidewalk uh, when you're going towards Hunter Place. Um, it is five foot seven in width, and I think it's an astute comment about how that could provide adequate width for the amount of passengers that the site is going to generate. So what we did was uh, we took uh, full occupancy of the worship hall and the Sunday school, which is 317 people. We actually increased it by a, a little bit just to be a little bit more conservative. So we analyzed 350 pedestrians in this stretch of sidewalk. Uh, we assumed a walking speed that's indicative of elderly uh, people and also school children, which is probably accurate for the demographic that we have at the facility. Um, in accordance with industry standards, we also took a couple deductions in that width because there is five feet seven inches of width, but you don't walk with your shoulder along the building, you don't tiptoe along the curb line. So we did take the three feet of deductions from that. Uh, we also assumed that all 350 people that are going to be walking in the sidewalk occur within a 15 minute period, which may or may not be the case based on how people arrive to church. Um, so based on all of those conservative analyses, uh, we resulted in a level of service D, which is an okay, now an okay level of service for uh, the way the sidewalk operates. That's with the 350. That's with the 350. Okay. Um, okay. Just to wrap up um, previous reports that my office has done, uh, I wanted to submit um, 
another parking study uh, for this development. This is in addition to the... No. Yes. Yes. So there's going to be three, uh, three documents in uh, this packet. The first is the parking study that's most recently been revised and submitted to the board. It's dated January 23rd, 2019. There's another study dated February 11th that was just finished yesterday. Uh, and then there, the, the third piece of this packet is all of the backup data from the various parking accounts that we've done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a report of the pedestrian analysis that you were just discussing? That would be super helpful. Thank you. Um, so to, to go all the way back from when this project started, it's been around for a while. In the end of 2017, the project uh, was looked at as a Baptist church, and we analyzed parking on Sundays, because that's when a Baptist church generates people. However, as time has moved on, the application's been more formalized, and there's a lot of other things that are being proposed in this building. So uh, the report that was dated uh, January 23rd contains an analysis of how much parking the other uses in the building would generate, such as the daycare, such as the after-school program, and any, other, any of the other weekday or Saturday uh, worship services that they are providing. Um, what the report dated February 11th contains is uh, the on-street parking and parking conditions in the adjacent garage, how those operate on a typical weekday and on Saturday. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what we find is that if you take the amount of parking that's anticipated to be generated by all these different uses throughout the day, all the different permutations of where there's overlapping, if you take the critical condition for that, the maximum amount of parking to be generated, and you look at the, um, the parking garage, there's enough space in the parking garage at all times to support this development Sunday, Saturday, weekday. The one thing I want to note is that the weekday count that we did, it was on a Wednesday. And the operations that they are proposing on Wednesday are significant because there is a midweek worship that happens on Wednesday in the middle of the day. There's a Bible study that happens on Wednesday. So everything that um, we studied incorporates the most conservative um, times of day, days of week, and finds that there's sufficient parking in the parking garage next door to support the project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, on. on on your Fe February 11th, it says table two, observe Sunday on street parking utilization. That does not include the parking garage, that's just street parking? No, that, that's, it's, it's, that's actually just looking at the parking garage. On street, there's not a lot to choose okay. from. There is a handful at certain times. Um, really, the, the point of this study is that the parking garage has everything that this development needs. And they have a reduced price in the parking garage? Yep. And how much is that? For it's two dollars, right? Two dollars. Right, and they have an agreement. We this is we went through the agreement. Conversation. I, I, they I have an agreement with the, the parking garage. The agreement with the two dollars right. on the parking. And garage. I, I really, I actually think that the parking garage app operator is very happy to be accommodating this use there. Okay. So that that's my understanding from prior hearings. But doesn't this also show that given that you do have all of the availability in the parking garage during the week, you actually have more greater availability on street at all times than you do on the weekend. So you actually have more of a choice during the week That's correct. to park on street or in the garage. That's correct. During the week? Yes. 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 During the week. Okay. Okay, good. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and she, uh, there were there were yeah, several. Was that, sorry, sorry. Did you want to mention about the DOT? Um, sure. I mean, I I do think the pedestrian study is very helpful because what it tells us is the level of service isn't isn't it? Well, it's not an F, <laughs> right? It's not even an E. So it, the level of service with 350 people crowding onto the street to try to make their way in that direction. Or they're not all going in that direction, arguably, but that is the direction of the parking garage. That's something that, uh, Mr. Valeria, I just want to make sure the the assumption on that 350 people 
should be that most of them are walking, or some large percentage anyway, are walking towards the parking garage, uh, right? So the way we did it was the arrival. So people leaving the parking garage and walking towards it. Um, so the majority of it is, e e the way the analysis works, it looks at total pedestrians in a section two way. Um, so if you have, I guess the analysis for people arriving, like from coming from the parking garage is the same as the opposite of that, people mm -hmm. leaving the facility and going towards the parking garage. The analysis would be the exact same. Okay, but, we did, okay. We did uh, analyze um, people going in both directions, though. So. Okay, but what I mean to say is they come out of the front door, or let they, let's say they come out of the front door after an event. So the event, what I'm thinking of is sort of all the kids are leaving some sort of a program at the same time as many people leaving services, for example. That maybe that's what you were thinking when you thought about 350. And there, and the main entrance is at the center of the block, where it's very a good wide sidewalk. And that a lot of the times when we see these pedestrian analyses, the distribution of who turns left and who turns right is pretty even because people are sort of parking all over the place or, or walking, right? But in this case, many of the people, if not most, are turning left when they come out of the front door and walking to the parking garage. So... They go straight across the crosswalk? They're crossing Hunter Place there. No, but Hunter the main Island. lobby entrance yes. to the building is in the middle of yep. the building, right? Yep. So aren't they getting out of the lobby entrance and either their choice is to turn left or right mm -hmm. and in this case because the is in the parking garage towards the parking garage is towards the left yeah you'd be leaving and going so it seems left. to me that you know in terms of the split mm -hmm. you'd probably have like an 80 20 split 80 percent mm -hmm. at least of the people walking left yes right? we assumed 100 percent people walking oh you even assumed 100 yes. percent so but so the question is so you assumed 100 percent of the people, so you said you're doing arrivals, mm -hmm. right? So arrivals were, um, but arguably that's a little bit more of a trickle than when they're all leaving an event. We assume that they all come at the 15 same 15 period, if, a 15 within minute 15 period. minutes of okay. each other, yeah. Okay, so they're, and you're assuming 100% come from the parking mm -hmm. garage, okay. I'll, I'll be able to summarize this in a brief memo and then send okay. it to the board. I have okay, thank you. something ugly. If you want that, <laughs> I, I you've been doing such a great job. I don't know. I, I think it, you picked up the worst case situation. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. what I was hoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I that, and I just wanted to make sure that it was. Yeah. I mean, it's great that you picked 100%. Yeah. That probably is super conservative yeah. because some people will park right around where they find a spot, right? Thank you. To save two dollars. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I know a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yes, in terms of D. So the the reason that the DOT bulb out is less of an issue is because that's what we really needed. Is was the level of service of pedestrian activity on that narrow point, and so. So everybody did that. So I think that was really responsive and helpful. Okay. And because at the last hearing we also talked about with the architect um, modifying the design of the building, and it, then it doesn't seem necessary when level of service is at D and not F. <laughs> okay. 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 Good. So um, the other question we had. So we still are waiting for DEP on this, unfortunately. There were some uh, plan comments as well. Um, okay. Add an acoustic fence detail, which mm -hmm. we'll do. Add a note that there'll be no lighting for amplification on the roof. The lighting can be emergency lighting, but no lighting for events, right? Um, and um, note the sound attenuation measures. The DEP is going to sign off. We believe it's going to be 36 um, decibels, but whatever the final out number is, we will note. And there was a question about the height waiver. So um, yeah. 24,521, it starts at 25 feet, and then it's a one to one sky exposure plane. And if you look at the zoning diagrams that were provided, they do capture a portion. They do capture a portion of the third floor. So it's not it's not only mechanicals and elevator bulkheads that'll be caught, um, but oh, actual I actual uses. And I'll let Victor. Okay. 
Okay, so then it doesn't really matter about. So, so we, I, we will we will require yeah. a waiver of uh, twenty four or five twenty one. Right. No, it wasn't. I was just seeing if the extent of the waiver is only really whatever I said thirty five thirty eight four versus forty seven six, but it's it's penetrating, so it doesn't really matter, right? Um, because sometimes what we we like to reduce the apparent scope of the waiver by saying the permitted height is the to the roof. And this, and I actually, when I read the zoning resolution, it says enclosures for mechanical, but I don't know if DOB interprets that to be mechanical rooms. So that was the part that was tricky for me. So a lot of, because in sort of in the old days, before there were flood problems, you put your mechanical on the roof and you put a fence around it and they were okay with the fence not being floor area, right? And not, and then also not being height. But now, um, you're more and more people are building rooms up there, and I don't know if DOB is caught up with that in terms of whether that's allowed to penetrate the sky exposure. They're, they're allowing us to put rooms. Most virtually all buildings that we do now, we put the mechanical rooms on the roof, and they're uh, allowable. So they're allowable. They're treating them as enclosures that can penetrate the sky exposure plane. Exactly. Ah, okay. So. All right, so I think maybe that's a note we make on our resolution. Yeah, so that the, but the note on our resolution is simply that, you know, the, the height to the top of the bulkheads and mechanical rooms is 47.6, um, which may be permitted obstructions, um, DOB to determine, but otherwise the height of the roof is 38.4, right? And just to, to clarify, because I, because one of my concerns is if we say in our resolution 47 six mm -hmm. and they come and the applicant try yeah so the applicant potentially can add a room up there and DOB won't know that that's not the scope of our waiver right okay so they would have to come back for that okay all right great thank you so I think we went over everything are there any speakers on this no okay so sorry no, um, we can't because we have open environmental. Um, so what are we think? We're saying mid March they promise. So I guess we put this on for the. Promise date. Sorry. No, we have a promise date of March 13th. Yeah. So we could put it on for the following week, arguably. I don't know if there's. Do you think there's back and forth on this? The questions with DEP. Oh. We'll have the environmental con consultant. Uh, okay, because that's the question. If if they're just, it's a promised review of noise. I don't think we had anything else, right? Normally, there's not a lot of back and forth on noise because they already are doing an acoustical closure for the roof and for the mechanical. It's already enclosed. So, right. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Kun Chan O. Oh, spells K E U N. Okay, you weren't here before. Yes, this morning. Just raise your hand. You can raise do it from there. there. You can do it from there. Do you affirm to, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board and to respond on it to the board member? Mm -hmm. So, so hi. Um, so yeah, it's just the question is you have these open DEP issues. Do you think that there is more than one round of submission? Have you already submitted on that? I already submitted. Yeah. Okay. And they made a comments on the report, previous mm -hmm. report, and I follow everything they need to get the answer for it. Mm -hmm. And the way I see the two issue is. Wait, do you expect them to send you something back? Well, let him finish. I want I to hear the two issues. Wait. Uh, it out of the noise. Out of whole EAS, noise was the biggest issue, and the WRP was the biggest WRP. issue, and okay. WRP was done. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and for the noise issue, I, I only see two things. The third floor playground, and that is, I believe, resolved through the sound barrier. Right. The other one is the background noise, the L10 noise being above 80 decibel right. point. So that is also resolved by having the highest soundproof window. And also design itself 
help to reduce the indoor uh, noise by having as little as possible <coughs> number of uh, windows. <coughs> On the bad side, there is no uh, window. So uh, mm -hmm. any noise from within the window, it is very limited to the outside toward the residential area. Mm -hmm. And also any outside uh, noise from the train, trucks, are limited because of the number of window and small window and the window uh, dash bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, the, but the <coughs> question which Mr. Shabetta just asked was, do you think you have more than one round? I don't believe so. Okay. That two issue, I answered it accordingly. So, so did okay. they give you recommendations you. and then you follow those recommendations yes. in your yes. submission? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. a comment letter. All right. So, in, oh, sorry? There's a comment letter in the file, actually, if you want to see it. It has eight comments. Yeah. Right. But That's I think they responded to the yes, comment letter. That's the yes. reason I'm trying to say, can That's we just put this on for like March, the end of March is the question. Um, I mean, That's what I was getting at. There are 22 in March <coughs> month when we have five hearings. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's a big month. Okay, let's do the beginning of April. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, we can do a continued hearing on April 9th for submission on March 20th. There are no available dates in um in March. It's just a it's very a rough month. schedule yes. for us. It's, it's, it's a yeah. We have two special hearings. So okay. Yeah. Hearing in March. So. Yes, so April 9th, March 20th, okay. Right, okay. And just to let everybody know if, because it's really environmental that holds us up there, so, you know, so that we couldn't do this arguably sooner, um, and that we can certainly do a close and vote if everything environmentally is buttoned up. And um, I want to just make sure that with respect to the Envir the acoustical enclosure, we have the information on what that acoustical material is. Okay. And, um, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Appreciate everyone's coming. Thank you. Um, ten minute break? It's you want a ten minute break? Ten minute break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you're on. Sorry. Okay, item number six, back on the record, item number 15, 2017, 258 BZ, 6161 Broadway, the Bronx. Uh-oh, what happened there? Okay, raise your right hand. You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond on state of board member questions. That's okay. Handed out um, revised plans, and I'm going to go. Please, please, please. Oh, Elise Fuladere from Eric Palatnik, PC, on behalf of the applicant. I always forget my name. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go through um, each of the revised sheets of the things we did. So if you'll turn to Z004, um, the planting area was revised to four feet wide in the rear. Um, the curb details are added on Z009. Mm -hmm. Additionally on Z, oh, there's a curb detail oh, oh, at the bottom. I okay. Um, additionally on Z009, um, the bowler detail was changed to a U bumper. And it's also referenced on Z004 at the dispensers. You mm -hmm. bumper, okay. 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 Um, the subdividing line was just left from an old. I don't know what to call it, just an older version of everything. So they took it out Good. <laughs> to provide no confusion on that. So it's been taken out of Z001, Z004, 
Z007 and Z008. Um, you asked about separate the separate parking lot. How is the private parking lot controlled? Um, we discussed it and we added a security chain with a stop sign at the dumpster enclosure on Z004, which will be controlled by a parking attendant. Z004. Sorry. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, you put it all the way forward. Okay. Security chain. Yeah. Stop sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then. There's a note at the top right, um, of, you don't top left. Okay, so on Z009, <coughs> there should be a, the wall says to be rebuilt. So. Sorry, on 09. Top left. Top left. Existing masonry will be rebuilt. Oh, oh. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> it took me a while to find the ballots. Yeah. Like that. Existing masonry <laughs> reinforced. Okay. Really? They want to rebuild the whole masonry wall? It's just a way of saying we'll take care of it. Yeah, we're just <laughs> trying to be, br we're going to make sure it's not all cracked. That's okay. the way of taking care of it. Okay. When? And um, I think that was all of your questions besides DOT, which I am not in control of. DOT has not responded yet on the traffic study. Okay, um, so I so I guess my question to the commissioners is: So this is a special permit, but it's effectively a continuation of variances that have been going on a long time. So one way we could look at this that the improvements discussed that are shown on the drawing should be done now. Um, that's a way to like finish off the site all beautifully, which is always my preference, but I want others to respond. And then the other question is, um, well, and that would therefore give DOT time to respond to to look at the materials. I would like to say that this one was pretty much because it was discontinued, like a complete rega rega, yeah. Oh, so is so is this one going? So I'm just looking at the... The building exists there. The building, yeah, there's not very much on the yeah. site. But I'm just saying that this one had more work because it was one of those discontinued right. uh, stations. And that's but, why we... Okay, yeah. so th I guess that's my question when you look at... Um, now I don't have the images in front of me of what the status of things are. This is a site where you're going to need to put in everything, right? Yeah, I'm just saying that it, it might... It no, no, so it's a major construction job, yeah. right? So the dispensers aren't even in. Is uh, that I, I don't want to answer that because yeah. I would want to... I don't think they are. I don't think they are either. My images that are the satellite images to remind me about the site shows <laughs> nothing in place except for the, the building. Yeah. So that means a lot of work has to be done. And the gas vendor is listed in the signage. Right, okay. I think it might be mobile. The vendor is listed, yeah. but, that, but that's it. But that's it. There's nothing on site. So, okay, so this is a going forward job. Okay, so then, um, yeah. right, there's nothing, really. Yeah. Okay, so then, I, so then my question is, um, are people comfortable with the traffic study as it was submitted as opposed to waiting for DOT to review it? Um, because I don't look at this site as one that's a particularly traffic conflict oriented site. Like we have some others where there's five lanes of different roads converging right at the gas station. Here it's a simple intersection. And I believe it's close to the expressway as well. Right, but I mean, you have a simple intersection with simple curb cuts. It doesn't look to me that it's really that big of an issue. No, right? I don't think it is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then, are there any speakers on this? So I, so all of this has been submitted, right? No, I can do a second call and submit yes. it. I just wanted to make sure they were everything. Yeah, I know. It's there. really good. Thank you. Thank you for being speedily responsive. And to your, Thank the architect. And the architect, <laughs> who probably stayed up late doing he this. Did, yes. Yeah. The revised date on it also. Um, and the revised date is? It's two twelve. Yes, it's, it's okay. It's uh, it says what? 2-12-19 two, 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 on the yeah. drawings. So 
Okay, so what I'd like to do is make a recommend, uh, recommendation that we close this and even vote on it. Um, yeah. I can Amanda second call and submit. submit. Yeah, yeah, no, but oh. but I that's what I'm trying oh, to. Sorry. Um, okay, so we can do a, we can close, no, we don't want to do that. So we'll close, we'll do a second call and we'll close and vote on You want your second call? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bode, just alert us when uh, you've submitted it. Yeah, I'm going to call it. So, but again, the drawings are 2 12 Okay. Thank you. Item number 16, 2017, 291 BZ, 1367 East 26th Street, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Do you <coughs> You're firm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and respond honestly to board member questions. Right. <coughs> yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. You're going to call them separately. Minor corrections oh. on the single family homes. I'm sorry, just please state your name. Please. Wait a minute. We seem to be short on, I know, like, I didn't, on handouts. Because this was okay. done this morning. Okay. Um, okay. I have another one if you want. Yeah, well, do you then you extra? can't do it. No, but actually, no. was this submitted? Because it was I'm submitted online. electronically. Everything okay. was just oh, submitted. This is the one I showed this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but so you can, it. I can look at it online here. It's a gift to share with Darren. Apologies, we uh, oh, okay. it was submitted and we forgot to bring down all this of the is sets that were brought. Two ninety one, is that right? Two ninety one. So okay. good after good afternoonish, Jay, <coughs> the applicant. Um, I respond. I attended yesterday's review session. I responded to the comments. Uh, with particular, we submitted electronically. We added the dimension of the step back at the rear yard to show the thirty one foot seven inch uh, rear yard at okay. the step in. Tell us on what drawings. Sheet A one and A three. Um, so A1 is the site plan, you added A3 the three is, Right, A3 is the first floor plan, which is over at the okay. change on. Okay. The cellar floor dimension, which is sheet A2, we corrected it to be uh, 27.3 instead of 27.4. Sorry, at A2. Sheet A2. What did you do? Oh, 27.3. 27.3 instead right. of 27.4. Okay, um, on sheet A3, where uh, we... Um, included the new terrace right mm -hmm. off of the den as discussed yesterday at the board. Okay. And then on all of the sheets throughout, we included the note that says floor joists and exterior walls to remain as shown, or the special permit is void. And that's mm -hmm. on all sheets. Okay. The plans before you have the actually have an incorrect date. The plans that were submitted have the date of 2-11-19, which was uh, referenced in our that, submission. So can't see. Oh. This is one twenty two nineteen. I know these the printed copies the reason you two eleven have, nineteen. Yeah. The reason you don't have enough copies is the printed copy they put the wrong date. Mm -hmm. We changed it. We just put the uh, we submitted electronically with the correct date and hard copies will be submitted to the board. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm looking at it online and I see two eleven nineteen. So I believe those were all the comments yesterday. Mm -hmm. Do we say stairs and terrace and subject to DOB approval? It Sorry, what did you say? Stairs and terrace and subject to DOB approval? We it did says it, yeah. Okay. Stairs and terrace is subject to DOB approval. Uh, yeah. Eight okay. three, there's a note with arrows. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Everybody is okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So before we move on to anything that we may move up, as a point of clarification, this initially came in as two separate applications, this and the house next door. Throughout the course of the application, it's been changed where we have merged the application to one under application number 2017-291-BZ, which is the one we're discussing right now. Um, so this application will be the one going forward. The lot merger and everything will go under this bin and this house number, or the house numbers will merge, but it'll be this block and lot. Um, therefore, with the board's permission going forward, we'll withdraw the other one. Mm -hmm. That's all. So happened. this block and lot and this address. This block and lot, this address. It's actually the whole application was merged. We corrected all the documents a while back to show. Right. You know, we provided all the surveys for both mm -hmm. houses. We provided site plans for both houses. All the analysis was for both. But houses. but you know already that they're going to be that the Merge whoever it is the the borough president or the DOB right. are going to consider this to be thirteen six. It will be 1361. It will be 1367, and it's probably going to be, I believe it's lot 19 that they're going to retain. Okay. okay. All right. So, to, so 
just to note that for everyone. Okay. Um, all right then. So, are there any speakers on this? So, I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Promutter. Aye. Vice Chair Chanda. Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown. Aye. Commissioner Shetta. Aye. Commissioner Shabetta. Aye. And a motion to grant on condition, which is already stated on the drawings, removal of existing walls and joists in excess of those shown on the approved plans will avoid the special permit. And then just to note the council, the uh, merger of the lots and um, that's reflected also in 2017-292-BZ. That's just for council to remind them when they're writing the resolution. Okay, so I'm going to call. Okay. That'll I'm gonna, be. I'm going to withdraw. They're going to call me now. No, and no, no. I'm just. This is a note to it's our council. So when right. they're okay. writing the resolution, they're reminded to that the that it's a co combination of those two buildings. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So okay. On, a, on that motion, Chair Promoter, aye. Vice Chair Chanda, aye. Commissioner Otley Brown, aye. Commissioner Shetta, aye. Commissioner Shabetta, aye. Thank you very much. Okay, so item number seventeen. 2017-292 BZ, 1363 East 26th Street, Brooklyn. So this is going to... Good afternoon, Jay Goldstein, for a motion to withdraw without prejudice. Okay. So for a motion to withdraw. Chair Promata? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Item number 18, 2017, 298 BZ, 14 White Street, Manhattan. You don't need to be sworn yeah, in because I'm going to turn it. Yeah. Just please put your name to the record. Allie Carreri for Greenberg Charik. Uh, we requested to adjourn to March 26th with the submission date of March 6th. Um, I don't know whether, did we already allow for that? Um, I don't know how many we have. We, well, we, talked, we talked about it, we yeah. talked about it yeah. several weeks ago. Yeah, yeah but it's the total so, point. I know, but this is something where there's financials, so whatever we might have talked about, we need to make sure that Commissioner Otley Brown's okay with the financials. There's also yes. structural, right? There, yeah, Ms. Commissioner, she does here on March 26th. We haven't added any variances that include financials. Right, it's just there's a continued one. There no new. Street. Oh wait, there's there's Cypress Avenue. Is that a financial? No, no. no? Yeah. Well, kind of, but not so. That's the only yeah. new variance. Um, right, and there's a continued Crosby Street. Yes, that's right. Okay, but this is also the March here. This is March twenty sixth. And this oh, is wait. right. This is what the month this that is we the had last. Spot. This is the last hearing in March. I know, but in can the I, interest yeah. of exhaustion. Yeah. But we, can I just yeah. insert that having spoken to staff, our client I, uh, canceled his vacation to be yeah. uh, at the March 26th hearing. Yeah. <laughs> it just it's it's a quick turnaround because it's two hearings the week before. Quick turnaround. Say again. There's a quick turnaround because it's two days of hearings the week before, which just leaves like three days. Right. So that, that's it. So, you know, so. your client's vacation schedule. No, no, but the, the point is that we have a hearing on the 20th. No, yeah, I know. We've had, but we've, we, uh, yes. And, and so it means that there's very little time for the commissioners to review all the cases for the 26th. So. I have to defer to Commissioner Otley Brown about that because it, it, yeah I could do it if you can do it. yeah I can do it okay, yeah. okay. It, it shouldn't Thank you be, so much we didn't ask for like too many things it's uh, I believe well, the decisive well. item is the letter from the DA if they come no, back with yeah, that letter in terms of that yeah. but we weren't even sure there was an A finding right yeah I understand right yeah. so this we're at the very beginning of finding out whether there's an A finding. So therefore, it, these are longer analyses than when we already know there's an A finding and now we're working on mm -hmm. how, like we're working on the E, right? Right. So, all right, all right. Okay, March everyone's okay with that. I appreciate it, thank you. Careful what you, thank you. Oh, um, could you just to. sign uh, for the record? Thank you. No, I'm not. No, no, not behind. I don't think we should make any agreements because we don't know what comes up, right? Okay. 
Okay, so. Okay, so. Usually, though, Tony says, come around and ask me. Yeah. Oh, okay. But then you don't know what gets inserted. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Item number 19, 2017, 309 BZ 406 Renson Avenue, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond on these board member questions? Okay. Thanks. Oh, you have to sign. Sign. State your name for the record. We've got to change this lineup. i got to put your name. Yeah. Remind me. I'm going to hitchhike for Sam and Associates. Uh, good afternoon, board. I'm going to start uh, by addressing. You're the, you're the owner, correct? No. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start by addressing the uh, incompleteness of my submission. Um, one, the lumens spread. Uh, there is no lumens outside the, the property. There's How do you no know lights. That? How do you know that? Well, it also states on the uh, plan that the architect uh, signed. It should state on the plan. There is no lumens. I'm, I'm the owner. There's no lights outside. I think the question is when we review these kind of projects, um, any of these automotive gas repair stations, or whenever there's any light fixtures that's located even on the site, mm -hmm. the light spreads out. And we want to make sure that the light that spreads out from the site, when it reaches outside the property line, it is substantially lower. Now, in this case, you know, you have residential on one side of the property, you have residential in the rear, mm -hmm. and the rest is all street frontages. So we want to make sure whatever light fixtures you have attached to the building or any light poles that you may have, the lights that coming from that is not spilling into the residential properties where it's creating uh, more light than they need to have. It really should be zero at the residential property line. And, and the way we can only determine that is when we see a study that shows how the lumen is spreading, uh, how the light is spreading from those light fixtures. But May I, that be attached to the building or other. I, I understand, but there's nothing outside of the building. It's just- Are, are, are there lights no. on the building? Are there on the building, no. Are there lights on? Are there any light signs? On the signs? ceiling of the inside of the building. Okay, so there's. How about at the back of the building? There's right? no lights. So it's in the back? There's only lights inside the building itself. There's no lights outside at all. So you don't have any pole lights? No pole light, nothing outside. It's pitch dark at night. Okay. Well, all right, so the way that you demonstrate that to us is with photographs that show all the facades at of night. the building. And then you walk around the perimeter of the property and you show us photographs that show, so we can see that there's actually no lights. And that goes for the rear area also, where which has been used a lot for storage to make sure that there are no lights attached to the rear of the building. Okay. okay? But not photographs at night, daytime photographs. Daytime right? photographs, yeah. Okay, no problem. Um, in terms of landscaping in the rear yard, um, I've spoken to the members of the community, and I spoke to their attorney as well. And they would like me to propose a green area, all green, with uh, ivy walls instead of putting trees in there. They don't. They they're not interested in trees, but they would like they would like grass. I spoke oh, to the so, attorney. So so here's the thing. Yeah. The reason that we talked about <clears throat> having dense vegetation yeah. is we're trying to discourage any possibility of it being as, used as a storage area. If it's grass, it will be used as a storage area. So we're trying to fill it up so it doesn't have any chance of being used that way. So, um, and you know. Chair, we're, we're closing the back doors. I understand, so, but you, let's just put it this way. Yeah, you have a bad track record. We have to do what we can to prevent you and your tenants from being disrespectful of the community. This is mm -hmm. one way to accomplish at least some of it, okay? We know it's cheaper to plant grass that dies, by the way. Grass doesn't do very well in these places. And so the, sh the, the, the shrubs and that kind of thing tend to do better. 
they end up taking over the back area and ensuring that it's not used for other purposes. And to say that, you know, I promise I'll be good, we don't have a good experience with you promising. I, I don't want to good. promise anything, but okay. this is what the community okay, requested well, the community, for me to say. That's your word uh, against okay. us hearing from the community. All right. So I would rather hear from them, but I also don't know how to control the use of that rear any other way than by filling it up with vegetation. Understand. So, okay. Uh, the operational plan, uh, they were submitted by the tenants uh, if they have to be revised, then they'll have them revise it. Uh, they said that they didn't... Uh, what do you mean it'll be submitted by the tenants? Sorry, what? The operational plan, what what they do? So, the the office tenants. I mean, not the office, the, the mechanical. The, yeah. The, so, the, the muffler repair guy. Yeah didn't submit an operation. He does hot plan. works. He just said he specializes in exhaust work. We do general repairs like tune-ups, brakes, struts, shocks, and oil changes. Didn't mention in his submission that it also does welding. So that's okay. not an operational plan. And by the way, for your t so this is the part that's quite frustrating. You no longer are represented by council. Mm -hmm. And we have council here who do this kind of work all the time right and and what you're doing is you're submitting to us sort of uh, low energy responses to our requests and it part of it is because you don't know you don't do this work so you don't know I'm how we're supposed all. to what we expect to see and this is going to take a long time if mm -hmm. you do it in this kind of little bitty way where the tenants submit also where they don't know how to <coughs> respond to these questions and so and and one of the problems is um, you what you will end up doing is exhausting us, and and we potentially will decide not to la allow you to use this place the way you want to be able to, okay. not to allow you to use the place. So I strongly recommend that you engage council, um, so that we can get these answers more efficiently. Um, and yeah. No. Okay. Um. The FDNY said that there was an office partition and replacement hardware. Oh, the, the hardware, the Department of Buildings requested us to put just a regular closet door handle as opposed to a locking door. Um, that was corrected on the, uh, on the office, on the office door, because it was a means of egress. And we submitted a correction to the Department of Buildings. We didn't get the response as of yet. And in terms of the fireproofing for the building, the building, we never took off fireproofing in the building. The building was like that ever since it was built. That doesn't matter. If your use is now a hazardous use, it needs to be upgraded to meet fire department standards. If you had a shack on the site that was made out of wood, and the shack was intended to store, I don't know, empty bottles or something like that it's not a fire empty glass bottle mm -hmm. that's not a fire hazard and then you switch to welding and so on your 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 wood storage shed is no longer an acceptable building st structure for th that work to be done so if you want this work to be done here you need to meet fire code and building code understood uh they were just saying that we took out the fire stopping, so we didn't take out any okay, fire stopping. Okay, you didn't stopping. take it out, but it doesn't mean fire code. I don't think that's, but no, nothing. It says the plans do not show fire stopping of ceiling throughout premises as cited in ECB violation. They, they do not show replacement of the prohibitive door hardware as cited by. The plans don't show that, right? So, so here's the other problem, that you're coming by yourself without your architect or your engineer. That's not, that's not acceptable because we need to speak to the professionals who are doing the work so that we can understand how the professionals are changing the, pro the site and how uh, co contractors, the actual installers, will be directed to make those changes. It can't just be you go in there with your own screwdriver and you, fig and you try to figure this out. It's not going to be acceptable and I, I have to warn you that if we see this kind of not responsive behavior one more time, I'm just going to bring this to a vote, and you're going to lose the right to have a non-conforming use on the site. So I your tenants, unfortunately, will have to close their businesses at this site. 
I mean, we're not in favor of closing businesses, but when we have an uncooperative owner who has a bad track record, that's what we end up doing. I, I, I really suggest, like, the guidance that you can get from counsel who's done this is, is invaluable. Mm -hmm. and, and you're at a real disadvantage because you're not very familiar with this material. So I, I need to, I, I'm going to strongly suggest that you, you get counsel. It will serve you in this case. And, likely and, serve you in this and case. you know the old adage, cheap is expensive? You're going the cheap route and it's getting expensive. <coughs> I, went, I went the expensive route and it got very expensive. But in the end, the expensive route Gonna might save you this site, right? So imagine <laughs> not being allowed to have this use on this site where Department of Buildings and Fire Department shuts you down, mm -hmm. okay? Much more expensive than hiring counsel that might be expensive now, but saves you a lot of money in the long run. You're right about that. All right? This is, this is part of the cost of doing business. You have the, you've been given the right to do something that's unusual in this neighborhood, right? And in order to keep Privilege. the right, you need to maintain the right to, you need to have earned the, the continuance of this right. They have a ask? privilege. A, it's a privilege. A, a privilege. Yes. Right. All right, so uh, on your advice, then I would have to seek. Yes. So, okay. So, um, yeah, I think, are there speakers here? Did anybody from, the, yeah, fire department? John Daly, Fire Department. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, apologize on behalf of Mr. Grogan of the New York State Department of Environment and Conservation. Uh, he was unable to attend today's hearing because he's been mandated by the state for training classes. Oh. I'd also like to reiterate the main reason we want fire stopping, or fire rated sealing, and a sprinkler system, they are ch they're changed to use as per the CFO. This, the current CFO only allows hand tools. Now that you're doing hot work operations, that is why we want a fire rated ceiling and a sprinkler system. If they went back to the just only hand tools, we would uh, withdraw our request for a fire mm -hmm. stopping. Thank you. So, and, and your tenant uses hot tools, right? Hot operations because he welding. explained that he's doing yes. welding and that's how you do muffler work. So either it's not a muffler and the place is called muffler, right? It's called... Top quality mufflers. Yeah, top quality mufflers. So I guess you need to do welding. Yes. Right? So then you're going to need to... Actually, in that area, we do have a ceiling. No fire sprinkler system, but there's a, there's a, there's a drywall ceiling. Okay, we're not going to go back and forth here. This is the job of a professional, right? Yeah. It's the job of a professional engineer to go in and look at, do the site inspection and determine what is necessary to comply with the fire codes that were cited by, very clearly in the letter, by the fire department. Okay? We're not going to negotiate this. No back and forth. You just have to do this thing. Okay. Um, and hopefully the next time we'll have DEC be able to attend, right? Um, okay, and then we had our own compliance officer go out to your site on Friday and observe that there are still a lot of junk being stored on the site. And we thought the site had been cleaned up and it hasn't been. And we saw parking already also on the sidewalk. And there's supposed to be no parking. And we did see there's a sign that says no parking and cars will be towed. But we didn't see the car being towed. Chairperson, it's hard to police everybody over there. You're it's very hard to police everybody. You, you can start an argument and a fight very fast. But that person that was on the sidewalk was denied any services and left. Okay. He did not service his vehicle. Okay, but how long was his vehicle there? He was waiting to come inside. Because he didn't move the car off the sidewalk, he was denied service. Yeah, do you have a contract with the tow and service? I do not, but the tow, but what, what it is, to get it towed off the sidewalk or off my curb, the police have to ticket the vehicle. No, 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 no. you're talking about NYPD. We're talking about private tow. Private tow. Yeah, but it's, the sidewalk is not private. It's not there. Mm. If, not, if it's not in my yard, garage. it's private. If it's his garage, you can call it a private tow. If it's in my driveway, I, I take it him, and, and they get towed. 
I can't, I can't tow anybody off the sidewalk. I have no right to do that. Yeah, big problem. So well, in that case, you could, I, 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 you could, you could uh, call the police, uh, and you could gather reports that shows that show those those reports that you put in. Commissioner, I do this all the time. I, I used to work over there. I'm working there for 35 years. And anybody who parks on the sidewalk, I call the police. By the time they come, the guy's already gone. Right. So but it's there not. Be there's a, a shopping. There's a shopping place across the street, and they come. You know, for five minutes, they just park and they and they leave. It, but you will be my... able. You will be able to come back here on the next date and show a log of all the times you've called the police <clears throat> and tried to have compliance. The thing is, I don't work there anymore. I have tents. So but I, I can make them do that. Okay. And now we have, and now you're creating a new op in your, you're having in your operating plan, this specific act of calling the police and in time, hopefully this, uh, the situation corrects itself. I hope so, but. No, so that's the thing is you're giving the tenants the obligation to write these little letters that you're calling an operate operations plan. That's not an operations plan. You're the owner of the property. You're responsible for all the violations. You know that, right? right. Landlord's responsible ultimately for everything, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You have to create the operations plan. You have to impose on your tenants what their obligations are, and you need to write this down and you need to submit it to us, and it will be enforced, right? And so by you, and then if not, the board will enforce by sh by shutting down. Yeah, I, I, I got you. Okay. Yeah, you, you say it, but then no, we no, don't no. see it, I, right? I, I got you. Okay. And I keep telling my tenants that I'm I'm keeping the place open for them. It's not it's not I'm keeping it open for myself too, but it's more for them. It's an R six zoning. So. I know it. We know it's an R six zoning. So. That's yeah. the whole point. If you don't want to have this, you can put up an apartment. I, I, I know what I site. can do. I know. I just told them. Okay. I mean, you guys, if things are not going to change, I'm just going to shut it down. You're not going to have to shut it down. I will. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, and there are not no much speakers from the public here. on this. No neighbors, because we've had lots of neighbors come on this. <laughs> All right, so um, we need you to engage council. The next hearing needs to, you need to come with council having worked on this, and you need to bring the engineer, or I think it's the engineer who's signed it's the drawings. Architect. It's an architect. It's an architect? Mm -hmm. An engineer. It's an engineer. It's an engineer. Engineer. It's an engineer who's signing and sealing the drawings. All right? Mm -hmm. Unless there's an architect doing the drawings and he's having someone else sign, you're not supposed to do that. But okay. I, it wasn't me doing the drawings. <laughs> Can I ask you for the what is the status of getting a survey done for the site? Um, I did call um, Bartlett Ludlow Surveyors, and they gave me a ridiculous a ridiculous price. So we called up Roguski, and we're waiting on that. Raguski land surveying. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I, I would suggest that mm -hmm. before the next hearing, you definitely should have the survey done and have the plans revised and the signage analysis. Yeah, signage, if you notice the pictures, the signs. We no, that's not the direction we gave you. The direction we gave you was to give us a complete dimension of the existing drops. I mean, you need to go and measure all the existing signs that you have. And because we don't think the signs that are shown in the drawings match what is existing. So you need to dimension the existing signs and find out if those existing signs are in compliance with the regulation. If they are not, then you need to scale those signage down. And so that is something that your engineer can do between now and the next hearing. That is independent of the survey. But I would also suggest that you get the survey because we don't yes, know. Correct. No, yes, direct. We have been directing <laughs> that for a while, but um, because I, I am a little concerned about some of the elements of the structure might be spilling into the uh, neighboring prop, uh, side lot, mm -hmm. city lot. So that's that's really why we want you to look do that. I don't know if you noticed the pictures from Ted Ricketts. But the, the signs have been scaled down. 
Right. But so uh-huh. okay. the only way we can determine that and the only way Department of Building will will be able to assess that is once you give them the dimension drawings okay. and show and, and that's why you need <laughs> you need a council because they will okay. tell you exactly what each one of these agencies require and how you need to provide those documents. I, 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 we are not saying we don't trust you, but that's the only way, technically, we can make sure everybody is on the same page. Understood. So we need those documentations. And they should all be watching the vi- yes. every video, yeah. every review yeah. session, right. every public hearing. Yeah, I, I, engineer. I, yes. So, and and your, your engineer can do the same thing. A lot of the directions that we're giving mm-hmm. are very obvious to an engineer who has experience. I, I, I can't speak for this person who's doing these drawings, but if the person has experience, they'll understand what it is we're saying when we make these requests, right, or directions, right? Okay. All right, so um, in terms of the site visit, though, we need the site to be clean. Because our, and our compliance officer is going to go out there again and check that the site doesn't have miscellaneous debris on it, right? It's supposed to be a clean site. You need to direct your tenants to maintain the site clean, and they can't be storing trash on the site, okay? Everything needs to be kept inside the building. Understood. Okay. All right, so to give you time to hire counsel. I'm on the counsel. You want me to hire the engineer too, right? Well, you have an engineer. It's not hired. Who's doing the plans? Somebody did I the drawings. Somebody who did the plans. Sealed, sealed them. What? Yeah, somebody did the plans. So they're not hired anymore? They're not. No, they just did the plans for me. Okay. So here's the thing. You need mm-hmm. to have engaged a person who will do the plans, file the plans, get the approvals. There's no way to get fire department sign off without filing drawings. So the fire department requested that drawings be filed okay. to show compliance. I'm sorry, but if you want to keep this use, you're going to have to spend some money. And if you don't want to keep the use, just let us know and we'll deny the request to continue this use. And then you can go build an apartment building on the site. Really, big enough site. Just as an FYI, I don't think even that will be easy because this is such a contaminated okay. site. It's so much of that. No, I'm not going to say it's not. Radiation. It's going to be easy, but there are ways. Contaminated? Why? I got a clean bill of health from DEC. I'm just telling you from what I know from my experience working on housing projects. Whenever a site is going to be built for housing and it has had auto repair uses, uh-huh. you will have to do phase ones and phase two and do auto remediation. Yeah, yeah, no, but then, so. but a, an apartment building is obviously quite a lucrative thing, right? It's a nice it's big a site. It could be remediated and so on. We see lots of Understood. applications to remed to build. I just apartment don't. Buildings. I, I don't want my tenants to be. Like, I, I, I don't, I want to give them a chance. I don't want to just shut right, so them it, down. But so since you're the owner of the property, you need to respond as a responsible owner of the property and engage professionals. So yeah, your, distra- your direction is to hire an architect or engineer to continue with providing the plans that are required by the board. And because an the only way I can see through this is to hire counsel because we can't just co- keep coming back here and giving you instructions like this because they're not, it's not working. All right. All right. So let's give time to do that work. Uh, In the meantime, I will keep the place, you know, as clean as possible. And yeah, also yeah. removing the curb cut. One of the curb cuts is supposed to be removed. Yes. Ah, okay. The one on 58th Street. Right. So that can also be done. For that, you don't need a council. You can do that right now. Um. Well, it's actually, special DOT permits. permits. That's true. Weather-wise. I don't actually know how curb what the filing is already um, Vice Chair, yeah. that curb cut is right where the um, the pedestrian walkway is. So I don't know about that. Really? If you look at it, you see you see where the pedestrian walkway. Okay. So you about definitely need to hire an engineer and or or a licensed architect and a council to get you through that yeah. process. Mm. Right. Also, if you come into agreements with the neighbors and they're in support. It'd be good to hear that from them because the last we've heard from them, it hasn't been supported. Yeah. I spoke to the attorney mm-hmm. and I asked him to come to express himself. See, the problem is that I'm having with the neighbors is because that property in the back over there, they used to occupy it. And 20 years ago, I took it back 
They used to occupy the whole that's the whole back. That's not the reason you're having problems. This is the reason. It's filled with well, there, trash. There's also some okay. other. Things okay, that's one that reason. But this is the main reason why why I'm having. So let me all just these, let me just streamline things. this. It, it it if we because of what we've heard last from the neighbors, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to represent that there's some sort of uh, agreement or support, it'd be best if you get it from them. Uh, if we hear from them or if they submit something in writing, but to that effect. Yes, okay, great. So what I'm concerned about is missing the planting season also. So, um, yeah. so I, I'd like to put this on to give time for there to be planting in like April, May. The, the, that's your window, April, May, or it's too hot, right? <coughs> so maybe the very beginning, can we do an early April? Um, but we also, I imagine, we'll want to allow them time to do this. And, uh, so I, we could do uh, April 23rd, but the submission in seven weeks. So that seems, that seems short. No, no. Actually, if you went ahead and quickly engage counsel, they could they could respond to this. It's not a lot of work to do for them to okay. do drawings and to get up to speed. It's not a complicated site. Right? Okay. So it seems to me four weeks to actually do the work is is enough. And I, if we put it off till the end of April, then there's no. Okay, um, then only other option in April is April 9th, which has 25 cases. Oh, oh really the end of April? We, we don't have, uh, April 23rd, we have 10. <coughs> April 30th, we have 9. April, only have three hearings in April. What's the middle one, April 10th? No, Sorry, April, April 9th, April 23rd. Okay, how about April? And, and April 9th is the submission is March 20th. Six weeks. Six weeks. Okay, let's do April 9th. That's a submission on March 20th. And actually, in consideration of this, we could it's give them weeks. another week. You know, we could say March 27, March 27. And but the submission has to be your architect slash engineer, whichever one you end up selecting submitting by March 27th the drawings that are completely responsive to everything that those that that professional hears on the review sessions which they listen to review at hearings mm -hmm. which they listen to in the videos and um, and your counsel putting together the package that's responsive okay and when we say responsive because we haven't heard anything from the neighbors I want to see a landscaping plan that's responsive to what our directions were at the last hearing. Mm -hmm. Not grass and not, vines fine, but not grass. Okay. What's fine? Vines? The vines crawling up the back of the building, yeah. fine. But not grass in that open area because that invites dead grass and it invites storage. Okay? And maintenance. And maintenance. Maintenance and the grass. But the neighbors said they right. would take care of it. They're not going to take care of it. The neighbors don't take care of grass. It's your grass, and it's going to die, and we don't want that, okay? We want it to be vegetable. Okay. All right? Move on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, do you want to do the second call? She submitted the sure. plans? Okay. Item number 615, second call, 2017-258 BZ-6161 Broadway Bronx. Are you Dr. Duke? Have a seat, have a seat, sorry. Police, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know. You're still under oath? Like okay. He's a very complicated guy. Police Volodaire from Eric Palatnik, BC. So this is item number 15, 2017, 258 BC, 6161 Broadway, the Bronx. We were forwarded the revised plans. Right. Okay, so someone has seen that it was submitted? Yes. Yes. Okay. You. And I they're the drawings you. of 21219. I'm just opening up the mail here. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, 16, 61, 61 Broadway, is that it? Yes. Okay. 258BZ, 2017-258BZ. Okay. okay. Revised plans dated February 12, 2019. Okay. All right. Are we good? All right. So then I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. 
Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. And a motion to Brennan. Chair Promutter? Um, aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Chair Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, the tenants from the earlier case. Oh, are here. okay, yeah. They great. just arrived, Dr. Dua. And, and, mm -hmm, and, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to call them? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're going to go back to item number 11, 2016 1208 BZ, 300 East 64th Street, Manhattan. We're going to take testimony from the neighbors, mm -hmm. the tenants of the building. You'll have three minutes each. Please come to the podium and state your name for the record, and you can come and sign them later. Hi there, my name is Jennifer Robbins. I'm here because we have a Barry's Boot Camp directly below us, uh, as you heard earlier this morning. Um, my concern is that... Need, sorry, where do you live? Relative oh, I to live on 300 East 64th Street, which is directly above Barry's. So first it's the lobby, then it's uh, Barry's Boot Camp, and then I'm the first floor right above them. So you're, what floor are you on? Well, it's called the fifth floor, but technically it's the first tenant floor. Okay. And right under you is Barry's Boot Camp. Exactly, correct. Um, so we were here initially in December, and... Uh, they had a six-week warning to um, decrease the sound levels, and they said they were going to get uh, new flooring installed. Um, but what we've actually experienced in the last few weeks since then is that uh, their noises have actually increased. Um, so their microphone levels, I can hear, you know, I can hear the countdowns of all their instructors coming up through every floor in my apartment. Uh, I can hear the music, the bass, my walls shake. Uh, one of the worst things is the weight dropping. So they have, you know, 30 people in a class that lift dumbbells up and then they all drop them on the floor for hours, uh, <laughs> which is, it sounds like thunder. I mean, it sounds like a construction site, basically, below. And, uh, what time does this start, and what time is it worst? Uh, it starts at 6 a.m. I'd say it's worse around, uh, the strongest is about 9 a.m. I think that's when they have heavier classes, and also around 6 p.m. And in the last, uh, in, in the very recent future, uh, have, have you continued to hear these loud weight drops? Yes. And do you have any way of knowing whether or not this is happening on the floor directly uh, below you or is it happening on a, another floor? Uh, I believe it is directly the floor below me. And have you seen any... I'm going to stop here. Okay. You guys can... Mm -hmm. Anyone else no. has questions? Oh, oh, you didn't have... Uh, our, our doormen also are right below and they are constantly bothered by it coming from above them. Mm -hmm. So the doormen are also aware, so they're on the first floor, right? right. Okay. Yes. And they're aware. Yeah, correct. Okay. So you, yeah. And many other tenants on our floor, unfortunately one tenant on our floor is a Barry's Boot Camp instructor at that same location, so he has a bit of a hesitance to complain too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so they said that they lower the sound system levels uh, that's not been your ex recent experience it has not they said they were going to lower the sound levels uh, between December 22nd I believe and January 18th which was their six-week deadline that the court had provided and in fact I had noticed it was louder since then no, it's not. Okay, so since then you noticed it was, sorry, I missed that last one. Uh, it's it's in, increased, and I think it's a behavioral thing of not really caring. And we call often, so asking. You call, you, you've made several complaints recently? I have. I, I've called about, maybe, I think, four times um, in the last four weeks. And, and who is it that you've called? Barry's Boot Camp? Yes, basically? I call Barry's Boot Camp, and I've talked to their manager and requested to please at least just turn the mic down and who's their manager i don't know the name do you have any emails or any communication besides phone calls i do can you can you would you be able to submit that to us of course thank mm -hmm. you okay thank you very much um yeah you have to sign over here yeah. so print your name please for the record yeah. do you have more questions doctor you're gonna no no. no no okay please 
Hi, I'm Dr. Dua. I um, Rachi Dua. I, I was here. Sorry, sorry, I can't. So I say again. I, I may have another question for. Uh, 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 Miss okay, one more question. Can sorry. Can you step back to the record? Uh, was there an agreement between you and the um, and the manager about taking some time off during the holiday? Uh, that was Prachi. Okay, thank you. And could you spell your name, please? Yeah, P R A C H I is the first name, and last name is Dua D U A. Um, so I, I came I came for the first uh, hearing, and um, you know, for like the first like first couple of days, like. You know they did lower they did lower the music, but then we're back to baseline now. Um, for first couple of days of the holidays, you mean? No, first couple of days after the hearing. Oh, after the hearing, okay. Uh, you know, because I was I was being very like practical, and I said that we'll wait for the floors to be installed so that we can like then we'll see like how the dumbbells are because I I'm I'm trying to work with them to the best of my capability. Um, but then, like after, like now now it's back to what like Jennifer said, like where we can hear the instructors. Through through the walls, like in our bathroom and our living room, um, and we I could still hear the subwoofer like waking me up in the morning. Um, so it's it's just kind of shocking that like after we all after we came here to make an agreement to at least lower the music, that's something that they can control, right? The dumbbells I know until the floor is installed can't be like controlled, and I'm very reasonable about that. But at least you can have control behavioral control over like your speaker system. That's something that can be adjusted. So. Basically, they didn't do that. So I made a request that on New Year's Day, at least, if they could just cancel the first morning morning class because I was like, everyone's off that day, and I don't want to uh, be up. So he he agreed to just like cancel that one class, but he couldn't cancel the nine o'clock, just like the seven forty-five. So I was like, okay, that at least that will give me one more hour on New Year's Day. Um, and so then after that, what's even more concerning is that like I I emailed the condominium like manager board. Stating that like none of none of the complaints like the complaints are still like on like ongoing like we could still hear the sound. We also arranged a meeting with him. All I had requested is that like can we? I requested that the hearing notice be placed on our first floor in the lobby, and I I messaged um I messaged my I'd emailed myself to get the copy of the hearing notice, and I forwarded it to them. They did not they didn't put it in the lobby. It, it was still it still wasn't there when I came back uh, yesterday. Um, and I requested that like a letter be sent all to all the fifth and sixth floor tenants to figure out like which apartments are being affected, to figure out like you know like how we could solve the problem because if if like if it's affecting all he he himself then he arranged a meeting just with us and the manager himself and he was like actually everyone on the, every apartment on the fifth floor has been complaining about this and specifically my apartment before I bought it last year that. Uh, that landlord who was like 90 years old did complain about the noise issue and they didn't tell me at the time of buying and selling that there was this ongoing complaint um and she was 90 years old so she couldn't fight it like i mean you know there's it's really hard for her to even make the phone calls so you know i just i just let it go but i said like now we should like try to figure out a solution um so like i've been trying my best like i've been asking them can we arrange a meeting with the fifth and sixth floor owners to figure out like where the problem is? I've been trying to meet with our elected, because it's a condominium, like with our elected like board members. For the last five months, I've been trying to arrange a meeting. I haven't even, I've yet to meet with, from them. I've yet to hear from them. Like I've yet to get feedback. I even requested that like we pay like a thousand, they increase the maintenance charges to a thousand plus per month. I've been requesting that maybe they could sponsor like sound testing to like help us figure out like what the problem is, troubleshoot it. Which the condo spot who sponsored the sound testing? Like just like the condominium like board management or the co spawn or the sponsors of the gym, like just to just help us out. And I said that you can you guys are more than welcome to come at five thirty in my apartment. Like I'm out anyways. You can just do like the you guys can do the sound testing. Like I'm trying to work as much as I can with them and I feel like I'm just hitting like a like a roadblock. I don't know what to, what else to do besides coming here and like. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you coming here. I don't think any of the representatives from the owner or any are <laughs> here anymore. We will direct them to, to listen watch to the video. I just e I emailed Frank and Jack. Yeah, but I think even maybe more than that. I I would like to send a have us send a letter to the owner of the gym and to council directing them to lower the sound levels immediately um, and that our compliance officer will will check up maybe we can have some kind of communication between tenants and our compliance officer to find out whether the sound levels have been lowered
because we could haul them right back in uh, kind of on an emergency if necessary. Um, this is a, an initial, this is a legalization and it's not even a, it's not even a continuation, right, a renewal. So this is a first. We could decide not to grant them the special permit and we could do it quickly, right? So I think a letter which we'll talk about among staff should go out immediately to the owner um, directing them that we've heard that they are not doing what they represented they were doing. Um, so let's say, let's see. Uh, I just want to ask, um, Ms. Robbins, if you come back, is um, the gentleman that came together with Mr. Sh Fran Shock Jock is Matthew, Matthew Schwartz? Schwartz? Is that yeah. the yeah. the person you're dealing with? And that was the person that you spoke so, to? Yeah, that, I met him actually on the first day of the hearing, and I only like exchanged like a couple of um, messages like the first three or four days after the initial hearing because he was trying to ask me whether or not the sound was like lowered and like what I felt about it, and I said, yeah, we're we're on the right like we're on the right track. You know, at the end, like I, I kept on emphasizing even to like our condo manager owner, like I'm not here, I'm like from the, I work in the Upper East Side, my practice is there. My goal is not to shut down like berries because, you know, I know how important it is to the community, even as a physician from like the health perspective. But at the same time, like I live there too, you know, yeah. and I'm like trying my best at every level to not let this happen, but I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming. We know it's difficult to get here Thanks. on a work right. schedule. Are they aware of the adjourned date? What'd you say? Are they aware of the adjourned date? Um, March 26th. It's the next hearing. And it's it, the next hearing at 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. I, I, I had emailed her. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And so, and if it turns out we, um, because our, so uh, Ted Ricketts is our compliance officer. He'll get in touch with you. If you could please leave your email addresses. I have uh, the doctor's email address and okay. telephone number. Okay. So, um, and then send to, send us sort of regular reports after we send out this letter. Um, send us regular reports if there's any change and if it's if you, there's still complaints, right? Um, and then we can follow up with that. Okay, so it might be that we're calling an earlier compliance hearing before March 26 if it turns out that it's really not changed at all. It's, a month and it, it's really six weeks of potential not sleeping in the morning. <laughs> so the contact would be great. If you could, if you could, uh, if you could come to the next hearing. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what your schedules are, but it, it's really great to have uh, some insight as to what is really going on from a tenant's perspective. We could make a note also on our March 26th calendar to make this an earlier hearing time because well, this it'll is be 10 o'clock. Um, oh, no, you need to no, come no. Like in other words, don't put it as number 11 on the calendar. Put it as number one or two. If, it depends if the POV is here, but put it as number one or two on the calendar. Let's that see, way, March 26, the here uh, an A case. An a case. That, yeah. that way we would know it starts at 10 because, like for instance, we're up to item number 11 and it's one o'clock. And then I, I just had another question for you guys. Um. Like, how do we go about, like, is it okay if we legally, like, uh, if we if we send a letter to our neighbors to figure out, like, sure. wh what they've been, yeah. and that's okay, right? I mean, if your condo board isn't doing anything, what are you supposed to do? You're allowed, right? and <coughs> okay. you're sort of this, organizing the, the fifth floor. Is, uh, so okay. it's, it's permitted. Okay. It's <laughs> okay. uh, something that I just want to bring to your attention, at the hearing, uh, we were told that um, they will be discussing the... Uh, the operation of the gym with the uh, sound engineers and with the tenants and with the management. So just want you guys to be aware of it and make sure they know that you know and you want to be involved in it before the next round of sound testing happens. Yeah, because I also told them that like there's, I kept on telling them that about like how the sound testing wasn't done at a proper time. Like between We have asked them to do it in yeah. the morning. Okay, thank you. Um, I, uh, final question for me. Have you guys ever seen the operation at, at the boot camp? Have you entered in and, and have you seen them work out with weights? Yeah, I've been to their class. Um, so basically the way that the class works is that it's, uh, so you alternate sides, so it's like 15 minutes you're on the treadmill, 15 minutes you're dropping, like you're working out with the weights. Okay. Um, so. And when you say, I, I heard you say dropping, uh, have you seen them drop weights? Oh yeah, of course. Like From what height? Um, so there's like a, so I guess it's like there's a From bench. overhead? No, no, like you basically uh, have the, like the bench, right? And you're basically yeah, yeah. like lifting like the weights and then just like. You're lying 
on stomach or on your back? You, you could be you could be sitting down. You could be sitting down, lying dropping. down. Yeah. Are you also like lying on your stomach and you're doing the weight yeah. like this and yeah, you might drop them from from your hand? While yeah. You're like you know, like some people might like I guess like it depends. Like I don't personally like drop the weights. Like you could like just put it on the floor. But I think collectively, when there's like so many people in the class, like I'm, especially, I'm, I'm I'm only asking from what you observed. Did yeah. you observe people dropping weights from, say, sitting down, shoulder yeah. height? Yeah. From shoulder height, sitting down. I wouldn't say shoulder height, but like at least. I've observed. You've observed. You have to come to the from microphone. Sh Sorry. I've observed from shoulder height. Is that sitting on a bench or standing up? It's standing up. And I've also read, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of a cultural um, part of their workouts. I've read you know, articles from their CEO. Uh, about the weight dropping and how it's like a, you know, it's a lifestyle in a sense. Can you, Can you please share throw, that um, with us? Yeah, if Absolutely. you submit that to us, that'd be great. Yeah, I will. Okay. And how many people, you, I just wanted, last thing about the, the worst time you said is around 7 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, what you said. I said 9 o'clock, uh, but I think Prachi's awake earlier than I am, so maybe, uh, <laughs> um, like I, for me personally, I mean, I leave by like 8:30 uh, to go to work, so like I could hear it. I could hear it in the morning, like starting from like six. Um, when I was when I had like a couple when I had like a couple of months off uh, last year, and I was like in the apartment all the time. The quiet times were when there were basically like no classes, and in the afternoon time, um, and a little like around 11 o'clock, it would it would slow down a little bit. Uh, but now we're in opposite roles, and like she's she's more she spends more time in the apartment during the day. So yeah. Nine, nine for me is the heaviest, and then around 6 p.m. I think that's when their class is the largest. And 6 p.m. till when? Like, eight, like until the last class. Until the last class of eight. eight. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank I you really so much. appreciate it. And you can also watch the tape of what happened this morning. Um, just, I had e emailed the applicant to say that they were here making a presentation. Um, the applicant, Frank Sanjak, has said I've received, I have contacted Barry's and have asked that the sound system be adjusted immediately. I don't know. Okay. And, and well, it should be a permanent. Uh, well, right. No, no, no. But we're going to send a formal letter. No, I know. It's going to be a little casual email. It's really, this is a demand, not a casual email that says, you know, pretty please. please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Item number 20, 2017-313-BZ, A53 Kent Avenue, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Are you the only one testifying? Are you coming? With? No, nobody? Okay. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board and respond honestly to board member questions? Thank you. Print your name? Yeah, the swear in chief. It's not in submitted. It wasn't no, submitted. It's no, just no, in case. Okay. Thank you. One comes to jail. Oh, you have an extra? Are you done? Oh, okay. Good afternoon. Moshe Friedman, Friedman PE, for the applicant. We, we had somebody attend the. Um, executive session yesterday, so if you don't mind, I'll just go through a couple of things. First of all, uh, we're going to go through, yes, I made a mistake. On page 10, we changed all the five feet to three foot six, but apparently on page 10 we missed one. Mm -hmm. However, page 7 and uh, the facades and 11 do comply, and in order to show that it is, we changed page 11 in order to show what exactly what's going on by giving little cuts of the rear of the building and the front of the building. What you're seeing is not balconies, but uh, those are gates which are against yeah. the wall. So therefore... <laughs> I call them Juliet balconies. Well, they're That's not even I, Juliet. In the front we no, have, there's no, no step lead. out. Right. Yeah, These yeah. are just safety gates because they have big windows coming down to the floor and we have to protect the people. So therefore, uh, when you're looking at the rear facade, it looks, you would think they're all balconies. We tried on the plans to say, it, it says railing, railing in two different places. 
-hmm. According to zoning code, you can't have a balcony lower than the third floor. So therefore, those are all just gates. And so the plans actually are correct, but we will put this picture, uh, this plan into the record in order to, so that everybody could see it clearly. Right. I see. Actually, you know, your drawing that you have on page 11, um, where there's that sort of part plan on the left side, yeah. there, the railing itself, because it comes out, looks like it's coming out on like a little Juliet balcony as opposed, it's like flying in the air, right? Right. It, and it, it, actually, if you really built it like that, I don't think that's allowed because that's uh, one foot is bigger than a baby's head. I think it needs to be four inches away from the building in order to qualify as protection. You're, you're talking in the front. Or, yeah, so this one here. Right. So that, that Unless that's at grade, it's not at grade. No, right? no, so it's you're above grade. So I, the railing has to be closer to the building, not a foot away from the building, but four inches from the building. Otherwise, the little kid could fall through it. Right? That's, uh, one foot's plenty of room. <coughs> you can go out to 20. No. To the Ju that's the Juliet. That, that is coming out. Oh, there's uh, a, an actual balcony? Well, you're allowed to go 22 inches above. No, 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 but that's what I... Uh, yes. There's, no, there's only two... There's two lines that seem to indicate railing. No, 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 no. There's that is a... There's line that indicates balcony. Yeah, that's a step-out balcony. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's, not, that's about 22 that's inches. So it's indicating a one-foot deep step-out... Uh, right. Juliet balcony. That which that is permitted, though... Like Okay. Okay, but in, uh, we're talking about in the. I think the confusion was in the With rear, the and because right. it just looks like balcony, 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 and we're not, we're, that's not right. what we're and doing. Especially that now you have indicated the eight foot three inches is actually a. Yeah, this, we put on. We added the dimension. It right. it was correct. It just it's right. clearer now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the yeah. other yeah. thing that was uh, it, the financial analysis. <laughs> First of all, I want to say I'm sorry. Barbara couldn't make it. She uh, spent the night in the hospital with her mother who fell down. So I hope everything's okay. But uh, I have to remind the board what happened the last hearing. This is an owner-occupied two-family. The comps are not really what we're looking for. We're looking that the, uh, the as of right uh, is not because uh, this is a two-family. This is what the board told us at the last hearing, that what we have to worry about is that the as-of-right uh, scenario doesn't work. That's what, because usually on a two-family, especially it's owner-occupied, we don't need a full financial analysis. You can listen. We, we went back to listen again to the last hearing. Uh, what we can do to make this a little bit more um, uh, plain to the board is I will get the two affidavits from the two partners, Mr. F Mr. Goldstein and, um, and Mr. Freed, stating that they are it's going to occupy the building. Okay, but so it still goes, so my question is still, how do we determine what the minimum variance is necessary, like that you're going to 2.4 FAR, um, where we have example of two FAR, like how do we, in, a, in another case, right? And how do and plus we have these two zoning districts right. adjacent. Like why wouldn't we go with the lower density zoning district instead of this one? In the lower density district, plenty of people have two family houses. It's an allowed use, right? So um, I, I'm still struggling with why the greater FAR should be required if in the R6, whatever it is, uh, R6A. Uh, B, R6B, it's a 2 FAR. Mm -hmm. okay. So we took the compromise when we started this, and we had the pre-application here. We said we would take the compromise no, between no, we the... No, we can't. We can't go. We're, going, we're talking about it here, right? Okay, so, so my question is, why not be a 2 FAR building if an adjoin, a nearby, like the, the proximity is equidistant, right? In the near proximity, we have R6B mid-block districts that are two, and we know that a two-family house works there because that's allowed in R6B, right? So it seems like the request for me is, is more than necessary to afford relief. That's the goal. Right? Mm. Um, so I would recommend just because I can't think of a reason why otherwise. I mean, um, we, that if we go to two FAR, that brings the building down a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, 
and then addresses any kind of concerns we might have with this issue of financial to the extent that it's considered. Or we can go with the comps and update the comps. No, no. So again. Right, but if you were to update the comps, you're definitely going to have to shrink this building. Because I'm looking at, first of all, you have no photos of those comps at all, so I have no idea what those comps look like. But I do know that you've made an argument that this is brand new top quality construction, which is why you included the FF and E, right? So if I'm just looking at Halstead and an element, two bedroom apartments are going for a thousand dollars a square foot in that area. You're somewhere at five hundred a square foot and change and you have a four bedroom, three bathroom. So if you were to find comps that are even two bedrooms in new construction, that would double what you're getting which means that you can't support asking for 2.4. So I think in order to just move this case along and like get on with life, I think the, the most direct is to reduce the, the building to 2.4. It addresses all the concerns that you've well, heard two expressed. Two to two, two, sorry. Two, two. It, it would be. Yeah, yeah, to two. And being um, getting rid of a whole, most probably end up getting a whole bedroom. I, 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 we well, need the. It, it, no, 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 no I, but let's just say, I don't see it justified in, in any of the materials that are submitted. And again, everybody else in the R6B has two-family home opportunity and um, seems to manage with two FAR. And we had another case where the, the variance was 1.9, for whatever reason it was 1.9. So it, it just seems <coughs> like... It be, you know, arguably it would be different if you were surrounded by R7-2s or something like that. But you're not. You're, you're adjacent to R6B district. So every, why should you be put in a better position than they are, right, than all of the other sites? And the site itself, um, 25 by 120, gets more floor area than most people because they using two, because you have an extra 20 feet to measure against, right? So you're actually advantaged by our waiver over everybody else who has residential in an R6B. That's, that's, not, that's not what a variance is for, mm. right? Okay, so I think that's the clearest direction. If you do that, we could be finished quickly with this and st instead of having to go back and forth, okay? Are there any speakers on this? All right, so... Oh, yeah. Now we're going to need time to redesign this whole building. It, it's not just taking okay. off a, a little bit. Well, you have a lot of. You also have a lot of rear yard to play with. So we're not regulating the rear yard, right? You have a much deeper rear yard than. But, well, 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 in other words, you could fit bathrooms, kitchens, all that in the middle. Your staircase in the middle, etc. Right. Right. Okay. Um, can we do April twenty third? Yeah. Um, so uh, next hearing, April 23rd, submission date. No. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 that's a holiday. Yes. Yeah, so, so speakers again. I did. I think I asked for speakers already. Yep. Yeah. Um, how about April 30th? Hearing. April 30th, does that work? Or what's the submission Submission date? is, is April 10th. April 10th submission, does that work? Okay. No. Uh, May 7th, April 17th. May 7th, April 17th submission? April 17th submission. It's 20th is possible. Okay. April anyway, 7th. we're waiting for DEP. So which, which one is we're wait, we're, we're, No, no, that, no April 17th, true. right, no, no, I'm just saying. DEP should be, it, it's only noise, so it's yeah, not a problem. Yeah, promised in March. So that's a, that's a hearing on May 7th for submission, April 7th. Okay. But you could submit whenever you want. I'm going to submit as soon as I get it together. Yeah, okay. okay. What's the hearing date again, May? May 7th. April 17th. Okay. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to try as much as possible to do. I may be a little, little bit over two, but uh, in order to get the program. But I hope the board will take that into account that we're... I don't know. Let's just put it this way. We're giving you the direction to do two, okay? Uh -huh. You can't tell because you didn't do the work yet that you Correct. can't do two. I'm not Someone saying that. Someone else did 1.9. Will... 
So it must be possible to do two. Okay. okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Have okay. a good evening. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Item number 21, 2018-51-BZ, 11-01, Plainview Avenue, Queens. Okay. You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to the board member questions. Your neighbors, you don't have to be sworn in. Did you answer? Sorry. Yeah, she did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she did. Didn't hear it. Please state your name for the record. Elise Fuller from Eric Palatnik, PC. Um, I had a conversation with the architect about the ridge height, um, and he said that it couldn't be modified because there'd be no headroom in the attic, and they played with that on uh, A002, and that was part of when we showed the lesser variance, and um, as you all observed yesterday, the the building was created in a really efficient way. It was, and in, it's just on such a small property, they worked with a lot of different ways, and this was the most efficient. But, but you weren't able to get the architect to come to. I mean, he it's a, his schedule is really busy, and he said he, if since this was the only comment, it was really hard for him to attend. Since it's the only comment. Or, I mean, your other comment is about the thirty, the the neighbors next door, and. Um, Next door, there is um, 30 feet in zoning height on either side, so it's about 37, as you said, and we provided a 35-foot zoning height when we're permitted to have 40 feet legally. No, I know, but yeah. the question is, um, <coughs> what about the neighbor? What about the actual heights of the neighbors? So it's as you observed, it's the 30 feet plus the base flood elevation. So we're about five feet. That's not my question. Yeah. The heights of the neighbors. We looked up on the CFO. They had 30 feet. On the but that's measured from base. That's yes. measured from plane. That's yeah. base plane, not yeah. from base flood. So you're automatically seven <coughs> feet or something feet higher. Seven feet. I want. But we say. observed that they, after speaking with the architect, that they all have. They are all raised. They have um, garage. Level. Garage level. Yeah. No, 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 no. But they are effectively three-story buildings. Yes. So three-story buildings, if you exaggerate it, 10 feet four to floor makes them t 30 feet high, right? Yeah. But even if they're 35 feet high because they have a peak roof, mm -hmm. you're measuring that from grade. Mm -hmm. Three floors from grade, 35 feet measured from grade. You're measuring from base flood elevation, which is, at the very least, we're measuring four feet above grade. Mm -hmm. Right, so it means you're something like four feet or five feet higher yeah, we are. than everybody else. We are about five feet higher. Okay, so that's why I was asked <coughs> yeah. if but there was a it, way to bring the root, the attic height down. Yeah, and they, if, in order to get the amount of rooms and a viable 1,600 square foot livable home, like it's already a very, very small home, we, there was no way they tried to play with the roofs when we first... Um, Gave you, gave you this application at the notice of comments we tried because we had to answer a lesser variance question and this was the most efficient way to provide the possible roof so okay, well, let's, so I, I I need to note because we just got that submission um, yesterday one of the neighbors came to the review session yeah, and handed in to us um, I think it was 13 13 letters but it, the letters are all the same comment, but each one signed by somebody else. I, I say that because sometimes we get individual comments, and yeah. the letters in support are also yeah, kind of and a forum letter that lots of people sign. And we did that because, as I stated at the last hearing, at the community board meeting, at the land use <coughs> meeting, they requested that we go to each of the neighbors and tell them about the property or as many as possible because they didn't want to vote on it until they felt comfortable that the neighborhood had been. Okay. thoroughly vetted through this application and felt good about it. It wasn't so thorough because you didn't get the... Well, there's always, <laughs> there's always people on both sides yeah. of everything. Okay. So we did go through people, but different people, and people change their minds about how they feel about it. So let's see if there are any neighbors here today. Are there there's any two. neighbors here to speak on this application? Please come. Please come forward. You can sign in later, but state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. My name is Saul Capellowitz. 
Do I just start? Mm -hmm. Start. Okay. Can you spell your last name, please? It's A O P E L O W I T Z. The letter written was from David Capellowitz. He's my father. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I live at 1109 Plainview Avenue. I've been there for about four years. I lived in the local community for about 17 years. I've really seen the community develop and flourish and. <coughs> It's really been positive, and you know, people are, are <coughs> the community is growing, and it's a nice thing, and we're all we're all for that. Um, my concerns were a number of different things. Um, I did listen. Thank you for clarifying in the executive session yesterday. Uh, a few of my concerns. First of all, under 7221B, the financial feasibility study. I understand that what that wasn't required under single family. I just mm -hmm. I wasn't 100 percent sure. Like if that's yeah. It's, okay, so that's not, uh, that doesn't apply in this case because it's not like, no, okay. So you're an immediate neighbor. You live yeah, right Yeah, I'm, I'm right side. next door. Okay. Um, okay, that was the first point. The second, the second point was 7221E, the minimum variance. Um, going through the plans that I received from the last hearing, uh, there are a total of six variances. Um, minimum lot size, lot width, front side, yard setback, sky exposure plane, nothing uh, the board doesn't know. Um, it, it seems a, a little bit excessive. I understand that it is a tiny lot. It's very small. The house proposed is also very small. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's 25 by 47, 28 by 47. It, it, it is a really small lot, so a small house kind of makes sense for a small, small lot. But that being said, you know, the house is four bedrooms, four bathrooms with a parking garage. It just, it, to me, it doesn't seem like this is the minimum variance. I mean, I, I think there could be a, a little bit less to be, uh, to be granted over here. I mean, you know, there's also considerations of my own, you know, loss of light and air because the building's going to be four stories, as was mentioned yesterday. Um, I'm going to lose my light and air, and because it's going to be so big and so close to my own property, it's probably going to devalue my own property, um, but um, it's, that's basically my own issues with, um, with the proposed application. The objection letters that I gathered over the past couple of weeks, I, I really didn't have a lot of time because I, I only knew about it in uh, late December and we only went to the, we only heard the hearing in January. Um, my objection, let, the objection letters that I gathered from the neighbors that I brought in, I apologize that they were submitted yesterday, a little bit unorthodox. And they were all from immediate neighbors, uh, talking about within like 300 feet of the subject law. Um, the letters of support, while I'm not, I'm not here to discredit uh, the applicant or anybody else who provided those letters, but um, those letters came from, I mean, uh, people as far as a mile away from the property. Uh, I, I don't know that they would really have any understanding of the immediate area. Mm -hmm. These neighbors that I went to, most of them were never approached. And there were actually two form letters. One was for people who received um, a set of plans, and one was for people who did not. The people who I spoke to, for the most part, did not receive letters um, or a set of plans or any of that. So, you know, the the neighborhood objection to the to the character of house was really from the the close the close neighbors the ones who will be immediately affected uh, can I continue or I don't know if I'm out of time I don't um, want to. no I mean I I wanted you to be able to just Sure. Um, State fully what your sure. concerns my, my were, so then we can address them amongst Absolutely. Ourselves. My last two points were I, I would request, because this seems really out of character with the neighborhood, I would request, if possible, that the board do a site visit just to see. The I don't board know has done a site visit. They have done a site yeah, visit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. Yeah, I really didn't know. standard procedure, it. the board, the commissioners visit the site. And it was that, okay. Um, the last, the last item I think would be to get uh, a set of plans and really to go over it with my neighborhood, with my neighbors, with everybody who signed the letters of objection. Um, there are additional people who are objecting to this, but they wanted to write their own letter. They wanted to more thoroughly go into it, but they unfortunately couldn't meet it in time for the deadline. So you didn't, I thought you, how did you know about all of this if you didn't review the plans? I thought you reviewed the plans. I, I reviewed the plans. <coughs> 
but I didn't, I didn't have time to get to all my neighbors to make copies of the plans, give it to them, go through the application and show them. I was able to speak to a bunch of them and 13 of them were very happy to sign the letter. I have a few more who are interested, but they didn't, you know, conflicts of schedule, you know, we all work and... Um, all right, um, we'll, we'll talk about this as after. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Are there other speakers? Anybody else who wants to speak? No, you don't want to speak? Okay. I'd also like to say that we were contacted last week um, by, I think it was a city council person or some type of official, and we sent them, and they said people were coming to them with questions, so we sent them a copy of the plans, and we authorized them to give it to whoever mm -hmm. wanted them. And they were the most up-to-date ones that were changed as we discussed the side yards last time. And, um, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, thank you. So, I just, again, kind of want to reiterate, the site is an extremely small site. An as-of-right house, if you could even build one, is more like a tool shed than it is a house. Um, the kinds of waivers, that the only way that you can construct this house is to waive the yards. Otherwise, there's, you don't have a house, right? So it requires waivers of front yard, side yards in order to have a house. And then because the house must be, and so this is something the neighbors really have to understand, they're located in a flood zone. Um, all houses going forward need to be lifted um, depending on where your grade level is. This, in this particular site, grade level I think is four feet lower than the, the flood elevation. So it means you, you have to have your what's called freeboard located above, um, above the base flood elevation, which puts your first floor a foot above that, right? And then, because all of these houses are required to have parking, and of course everybody wants to have parking, you can't, par you can't drive your car underneath this four foot thing, and there's no place on this site to put the parking outside. So you must lift the house up seven feet in order to be able to get a parking space inside the house, underneath the house, right? So automatically it lifts the first floor up and that's not really a usable floor. You're not permitted to use that floor except for parking, right? So it, it forces the house, all the other houses in the neighborhood have their ground floor both parking and some bit of usable because they predate these flood regulations. Say, say again? A lot of the houses around them ended up, when we went through the history, combined two lots together to make one. Right, well, so many of these houses are semi-detached yeah. houses, right? Um, what are you looking at? This is a two-family. Yeah, and so, and, ma and many, many of the houses in the neighborhood are two-family homes. That's three, actually. Or, three. or three families. So this is a one-family home, so in terms of the density, lower than many of the houses in the neighborhood. And then the other part of it is that, um, that in this neighborhood, a two-bedroom house probably isn't, standard, right? And and to be able to use your attic to put in another bedroom or some occupiable space is a standard way of using an attic. So you need to have a minimum head clearance. And the architect actually gave us a drawing that showed what would happen if the roof line was altered. And um, so there were two options. Oh, it was almost like option A and option B. So option A, which showed the roof line more extreme, showed that you wouldn't be able to stand in a, a large part of the bedroom. There'd be like a, an area of about five feet where you could stand, whereas opposed to the roof line that was being proposed, there was a bigger area in the bedroom that you could stand, but it's still not the whole bedroom. So there's a part where eventually you hit your head in the bedroom. It's a kind of a classic attic bedroom. So um, I, I just don't see how you grant relief on such a tiny site without allowing for the setbacks that are requested, including the height. And then the other thing I do want to point out is the distance, as we talked about yesterday, the distance between the proposed building and the adjacent buildings is greater than what's required by zoning in terms of distance between buildings because we have both yard requirements and distance between buildings requirements on adjacent lots and it's greater than what's required for that minimum distance because of the where that adjacent house is located and then when I just go to Google 
uh, satellite. Uh, we always give Google a little bit of promotion on these hearings because nobody else is giving us satellites. I don't mean to promote Google. Um, the house on the opposite side of the neighbor has already has a narrow, a much shallower side yard than what's proposed. Um, I'm just kind of looking at it and trying to guesstimate, but it looks like it's maybe a 10 foot distance between the existing building and the adjacent building, which is built on the property line, right? The adjacent building is built on the property line. So the distance might be 10 feet and the distance that's proposed here, what did I say? It's 15 plus four. It's 19 foot five inches, so it's almost 20 feet between the, the proposed house and the adjacent house. So actually in a much better place than their neighbor on the other side. So I just have to say, I think it's this is a really modest proposal, and I appreciate that the neighbors got used to having a vacant lot there for a very, very long time, but this is a piece of property that a property owner has the right to build a house on, and that's what a variance is for. Any other? No, I agree with you. Um, and as you pointed out, most of the buildings here are two families and three families. The immediately adjacent buildings on Plainview are three family homes, and the ones on Beach are two family homes, according to uh, data, sources. Uh, data sources. This is a one family home. So, um, and, and I think mm -hmm. they really have been. I think the applicant has tried to be as responsive to the neighborhood and set the building back where possible. Right. I don't think there's a better solution. And we're talking a bedroom number two is under 10 by 10. It's basically your most basic bedroom, right? Hard to furnish. Try furnishing a 10 by 10 bedroom. So, um, so yeah, so I, I would just like to say that I appreciate the neighbor's concerns. We've already had two hearings on this and heard from the neighbors and actually went back and looked again at the building after we heard the um, <laughs> objections of the neighbors. And I just don't see another solution for a viable house on this lot. It's not, and it's not as if the owner came to us saying, I want to put a two family in here and therefore give me floor area increase, which sometimes we see, yeah. right? This is the most basic variety of waivers. So, so I would like to make a motion to close then. Chair Promoto? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. And, um, no and a motion to grant. Chair Promoter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Otley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. This application has been granted. Thank you very much. Thank Item you. number. Thank you to the neighbors for coming also. Sir. Item number 22, 2018, 52 BZ, 159 Borum Street, Brooklyn. No, she wanted to do them separately, right? Yeah, yeah. separately. Separately. Yeah. Oh, you have to be sworn in the. No. Oh, yeah. And so. Print. Okay. Raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board to respond on the city board member question? Good morning. Oh. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Formatter, members of the board. Uh, so, you know, these cases are both related, but I think we'll start with 159 Borum. Uh, and your name for the record? Oh, Nora Martins Thank from Ackerman LLP, representing the applicant. So, um, uh, Chair, you had a question about the threshold issue of the income-restricted housing units, and we will submit um, a more detailed breakdown explaining the as of right parking requirements at the time these buildings were built in 1980, uh, which was 70 percent in the R6 zoning district, uh, compared to the 45 percent uh, reduced parking requirement uh, pursuant to former Section 25-25. So we'll make sure to submit a more detailed breakdown of that information. Uh, we've also relayed the comments on the drawings to the project architect. I believe they've already made the changes 
and we will submit those, which included fixing the distance between buildings dimension, um, adding Sorry, a specific can you note. What you just said. Sure. Uh, we've relayed the comments on the drawings to the project architect, and they've already made the requested changes, which included fixing the um, uh, minor error on the distance between buildings. Just um, dimension, adding a spe the specific note about the rear yard equivalent to the dimension rather than on the side of the plan and also um, reconciling the parking space count so they both reflect the 67 spaces that are proposed at the site. Um, with regard to the restrictive declaration requirement for the existing income restricted housing units, I have a few points to make about that. One is that the, we did submit uh, to the board a copy of a city council resolution and a letter from the owner. Again, the owner of the, in this case, unlike uh, previous cases before the board for these parking reductions, the applicant and owner and developer of the new housing at the site is not the same owner as the existing income restricted housing. Um, common, actually. Depends on the case. Right, I'm just saying the, the last two of these 73, 43, 433 applications, it was not the same, which has presented difficulty in this particular application. But we did, um, we do believe that the affordability of the existing buildings is insured. We presented the board with a copy of the city council's resolution, which approved a tax exemption. While the current tax exemption does not expire until 2022, the approval from the city council actually amended that prior tax exemption to extend the term to 2062. So it's not a, you know, to be applied for in the future once the current tax exemption expires. It effectively amended the existing tax exemption to extend <coughs> it for another 40 years. Condition of that tax exemption is that the income restricted housing units remain subject to the Section 8 half contract until otherwise the tax exemption, which is extremely valuable to the property, would lapse and no longer be able to avail themselves of that tax exemption. In connection with the tax exemption, which was originally granted in 1980, along with the project approval and disposition, the, uh, a development agreement was entered into between the owner and the city. It's referred to as a regulatory agreement in the city council's resolution, but it's technically a development agreement uh, in connection with the disposition, which also requires that housing remain affordable in accordance with um, FHA requirements on the site. Was that submitted? We, we will submit that as well. No, that was not submitted with the application. And the, um, we'll confirm, but our understanding from the um, housing finance attorney that worked with the other owner on all of these approvals is that that regulatory agreement, as it's referred to in the city council resolution, is effective until 2062, coterminous with the tax exemption. Sorry. The tax exemption doesn't isn't available for continuation until 2022. That's what it says in the city council resolution. It's effective beginning upon the expiration of the current one, but the actual what the city council approved is an article 5 tax exemption, an amendment to the previous tax exemption to extend the term of the tax exemption. So they approved the right to do it. But no, they approved it. It's done. So this is the part that I really understand. By approving the, by approving it, the owner could still opt in 2022 or 23, not to go ahead with the exemption. That's what it states in the owner's letter. The owner's letter right, it's says possible. it's in yeah. my interest to continue, but that means it's also possible to not continue it. it so it was granted the right to continue, but the actual continuation requires a signature of some other kind of a document in 2020 one or 2022 whenever that's actually executed right okay. the owner has to opt in right You're so the, the pro i think it's more that they have to opt out no no that doesn't really make sense it says that sorry no no it it, yeah. it, it, it it i understand that the owner today sees it to be his benefit to remain in this because of the tax benefit we, I, I think the board appreciates that and understands that but <coughs> That doesn't mean that tomorrow he may find it much more profitable to choose another course of action and not continue making affordable, lose that tax benefit, and 
act, and if he believes in his cost-benefit analysis, that it is more valuable to him to not have affordable housing. Right. So, so, and so the other thing that I want to point out that we've talked about in other cases like this is that the the property owner, the current property owner, obviously is making money from the sale of either it's a ground lease. I'm not sure exactly how this is being done, but either as a ground lease or as a as a sale of the of the fee and the subdivisions of tax lots um, is making money from selling this to this for-profit developer who's building market rate housing. So in order for the deal to go ahead, they need us, right? Or maybe they don't, because on this site, actually, they could put the parking. We talked about this before. There's places to put this parking. Not this, uh, 159 Borum Street, actually, there is nowhere to put the... Well, but maybe in terms of the zoning lot, you know, you can say that it's within 600 feet of or something like that. There, so arguably, there's there's a place to put this parking, right? And I don't know, you have 50 feet between the buildings. Why isn't there a place to put the parking? I think, I mean, the findings of the special permit note that it would be a improved site plan, and I don't know that no, no, anyone, including the existing owners, would find that, that way. Exactly, but part of the point of the special permit is to avoid this type of situation where existing buildings have a situation where a new building is built and everything's as of right under zoning, but then they have an open parking field where they used to have open space. I think that is I'm part of the purpose of the special permit. But that's the only if you stayed with the special permit. If you went as of right, and as of right, you're allowed to fill up the center with parking until you hit that maximum threshold of open space covered with parking space. Whether or not you're, um, it's a desirable design solution is another thing, but really this is one of the situations where there is room to do this on an as of right basis, right? In addition to which the stackers make possibility of doing this on an as of right basis, et cetera, et cetera. So, to go back, the owner who provided that letter um, stands to gain a lot from the sale or... Can I address that? Can I, I actually have an... Well, let me just finish sure. what I well, was saying, okay, please. It's not so the, because the owner stands to gain and does stand to gain, there otherwise wouldn't do it because that's just the way we are, right? Then, and the owner intends to continue as stated in the letter um, with this... Uh, tax abatement um, and so on, tax exemption, then I just, I still don't understand why that owner wouldn't enter into a restrictive declaration if that was possible to finish this deal, to enable the deal to go forward. Did you want to say something? No. I was, I just, I was yeah, just yeah. going to say that perhaps they get a condition that any other type of um, non-regulation of the existing units um, kind of stimulates the original parking requirement to have to be satisfied. Well, we could do that. We could make the grant right. entirely conditioned right. on, and what we tried to do with these restrictive decks is, and so if it's conditioned, so then we could, huh, I, I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to have this developer be the one who is obligated because it's a conditional approval that runs to the other site, mm -hmm. right? right? And the it's the uh, this is the other part that's quite confusing. The actual approval is to allow the other site not to have parking anymore, right? Right, right. for the so zone, it's all one zoning lot. It's all one zoning lot, but you're telling us it's a different developer and therefore you know that's just, and all of that that's stuff. That's a totally just technical issue. Okay, so to then who signs a doc? So the but the reality is it's the current property owner who's asking for this because without getting it, that person can't develop the site. So it isn't really relevant to us who the developer is on the new buildings. What's relevant is the owner of the current site, and that person is being. Um, obligated to perform in a certain way. So I, st I again, I kind of, I have to go back. If we were to condition, it's the same thing. The we're conditioning that the current owner of this property to uh, to obey with the parking regulations should the current owner not provide the affordable housing, because this is running with the current owner's zoning requirements, not the future developer's zoning requirements. Right. Except that the future developer, upon seeing that the current owner isn't providing 
isn't providing the income restricted housing anymore <coughs> could sue them yeah but we don't really want to get into it. Yeah. yeah instead we'd rather regulate this through a process so it does i matter. guess i want to reiterate this it's the current owner who needs to obligate to provide the parking in the event that there's no affordable income restricted in the event that the quantity of income restricted units that we see today on the site are reduced so I, i'm back to the same thing because we'll impose that condition on that owner we might as well get a restrictive declaration for it okay. if i may there's a yes i just wanted to clarify one point mm -hmm. um so there is the city council tax exemption which goes till 2062 and will lapse if they don't continue to provide Section 8 housing, right. correct? There is also a HAP contract on the site, which is good for 20 years and doesn't, ex it was in 2016, and so that doesn't expire till 2036. So the current owner is going to enter, okay. is going to continue the tax exemption because otherwise they're going to be providing Section 8 housing with no tax exemption, which makes absolutely so no sense. So what would the reason be to not a restrictive deck if it's going to happen well. anyway he's yeah. going to do it anyway there's there's no harm no foul well it's a completely different legal document and burden on the property it's already incredibly burdened there's a haps contract there's going to be a tax exemption how much more burden can and also how could, get? It, Here, let me just ask. just a, it well, it's not a burden if it's their intention a burden it would it know, burdens any future transfer of the property and it burdens exactly any future mortgage on the with. property and that is the concern we're concerned with a future transfer we're concerned with a change of mind on and uh, this this benefit that's going to be received for purposes that aren't well that if it's aren't. no longer income restricted housing then they'll have to provide the parking so i don't see what well the concern how is. how by a condition that we're imposing on this neighbor the condition can be on the certificate of occupancy well then what's wrong if it's going to be on the certificate can, of occupancy well, enforce and that if it's on the cfo and we know very well that often it doesn't get on the cfo which is one reason we ask for restrictive declarations and that's part of the problem is the bsa has a lot of experience with its conditions not appearing on the cfo because as soon as the cfo is amended it drops off that's the end dob has no idea and by the way DOB cannot tell whether it has no mechanism for checking whether the units are income restricted. DOB doesn't do that work. So the only way to do that is to have an enforceable document, which is a restrictive declaration, which, and again, each time you list something, you're adding another potential burden that's cloud on title in some way that will show up in a title report, the CFO says, and all of that stuff. So then I, I again, I go back. So let's just make it easy. Provide us a restrictive declaration. That's easy. So we're, okay, and that's the way we've worked on all of these other projects. It's working, and it's not induced. In, it's not uh, more burdensome than is currently the, the case. The issue is that the other owner will not agree to a restrictive deck. Unlike the other cases where the applicant was the owner, they were prospectively well, applying for the special You should bring the owner permit. here the next time because we have, in order I've for been the trying deal to, ask to if we can have be completed, we need the owner. Okay. Can, I, can I please have the applicant speak because they have a relationship with the owner and they can tell you exactly what the situation was. And also, one thing I want to clarify is that this property has already been sold. The existing owner has no, really no in, interest in doing anything for this project. Like, they don't have any incentive. They have sold the property. The reason they did all of that, and um, Paul Woody from Say will explain that to you, there were several other benefits that accrued from the initial sale of that property. And then he can explain it to you, but they've already done everything to keep that property income restricted. They've sold this parcel, and they have no further incentive. Un understood. So, so here's the thing. Okay, I just want to talk about this a little bit. I have a lot of experience with, in my previous work, with needing to go back to the seller of development rights or access rights and all of that kind of stuff in order to make a deal happen that is beneficial to the developer of the new site, right? It's called going back and working out a new deal, right? It's done all the time. The seller is happy to uh, reconsider a deal when, when it's of, let's say, financial or other kind of interest to them. So if this is the, develop, the current developer's interest to not provide the required parking, 
because obviously the site was sold on on sort of false pretenses, I want to say. If the if the developer is thinking to occupy with a new building lots that have required parking on them. Either the developer represented to the seller that that required parking would be provided in the new buildings, therefore totally in compliance with zoning, or somehow or other nobody seemed to know that you couldn't occupy these vacant lots. These, as these as you've mentioned, lots. there are places the parking could be provided, so I think it's so, I, so I think we have totally speculation to talk about what the term oh, of the deal so, is. So, but this is what's confusing. So yeah, the seller knew that required parking was going to be op occupied by buildings. Right, that was the intent to apply okay. for the special permit card. So intent to apply for a special yeah. permit doesn't mean make you get a special permit. more efficient and yes. work. But it doesn't mean you get the special Correct. permit. No so normally those are option contracts. So obviously there was something else. And anyway, so it's kind of not our problem that, that there's a whatever needs to be worked out, but we need to know that the income restricted units will remain such and the obligation is imposed on the seller, not on this developer. Because this developer okay, doesn't have any control on the, over the parking of those other units. So we could have any kind of object, um, condition we want, it's never going to happen. So it's not an, it's, we're not in a workable situation here and you need to make it work. Oof. And that's called lawyers doing what lawyers do. Could I ask? Okay. Could you give my client a minute to speak? Yes. Sure. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Yeah, yeah. I am <clears throat> Paul Woody from Slave Property Group. Um, I, uh, I work at the developer of the Johnson and Borum projects. Um, so I just want to clarify that, you know, we have a good relationship with, um, we're actually uh, leasing these sites from the owner of Korea Bay Gardens, the Section 8 housing surrounding our projects. Um, and we have a good relationship with them. We have a good development agreement with them. And so there's no, there's no false pretenses. There's no feeling of that sort of thing in this transaction. Um, but I, I actually just want to take a step back. Um, so we worked for a long time before we signed these ground leases with the um, owner of Karime Gardens um, to um, come up with an agreement that the city council person Antonio Reynoso and the community board approved of um, to allow us to develop these sites as, as the projects that you are now familiar with. Um, part of that negotiation and that agreement and those com conversations that we had um, involved extending the HAP contract in Curry Bay Gardens to maintain affordability in those projects, um, as Nora has mentioned, and also to do a variety of capital improvements in Korea Bay Gardens for the tenants who live there. So, um, you know, um, that included re-landscaping the grounds. They have a lot of nice um, parks and playgrounds um, that have a lot of potential. Um, so those are going to be renovated as part of this deal. There's a variety of things that are going to happen that benefit Korea Bay Gardens and the residents who live there as, as part of this project. So I think, you know, that uh, work that we did and the owner did with the residents of Cray Bay Garden and the broader community um, was reflected in this project even being able to happen. Um, and it's also reflected in the approvals we got from the community board and uh, a letter of support we got from the council person in support of this particular special permit application for the parking. And I think, you know, that reflects their support of this project, but it also reflects their feelings that you know, this level of parking is not required in the community and that there are, in fact, even, you know, having a little bit less parking in these projects sort of encourages um, other modes of transportation, which, you know, um, I think everybody, you know, can support. So um, I think, <clears throat> so that's just sort of like a little bit of the background about the project and the, the out work we do with the community and Korea Bay Gardens and the benefits they're going to get from this project. And, you know, I, and I'll just speak, there's a general conversation to be had around the parking that's, you know, actually going to be used in this, in these projects, which, um, you know, based on our experience as a uh, landlord and owner in this neighborhood. We have a building, a 20 unit building that's a couple blocks away. Sorry. 
and a 50 unit building that's off the Lorimer stop on the L train. Um, the 20 unit building has one parking spot lease. The 50 unit building has four parking spaces leased. I think in these new projects, there's just not that much demand for parking. That's, that's our experience. And we also brought our broker here who does a lot of projects in the neighborhood who can also speak to that. But they're just, you know, the parking studies are done off of, you know, census data. Um, and that's, you know, a, a, as good a metric as we have. But we're just, our perspective as an owner of these sorts of new construction buildings, people are just, they don't want parking spaces in these buildings. People don't drive cars. There, there's a lot of other options for transportation in the in sort of you know there's the L train there's the the, the uh, there's other trains buses like lo bikes lots of other ways to get around and I think that that's reflected in the people who are renting in the building so then the the last point is about um, uh, sort of again the restrictive deck I mean unfortunately we've reached out to our you know, our par basically our partner in this deal. There's no, you know, again, we have a very good relationship with him. Um, he's there's just no, there's no restrictive deck that can be signed in this case. Because, um, well, so you know, the HAP contract goes through 2036, right? No, answer that question. Because, well, I, I this is part of my answer. So mm -hmm. there's a HAP contract that goes through 2036. So there's an obligation. He's a absolutely obligated to provo provide affordable housing through that date, right? So okay. through that date no restrictive deck is necessary because that housing is remaining affordable per the HAP contract through 2036, okay? So really, what we're talking about is after 2036, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so after 2036, I think the, the, the way that this housing is able to be affordable is through two, two parts, right? The, the tax exemption, which we've talked about, but also, you know, the, the HAP contract, right, that comes from the federal government. Um, and I think, in all likelihood, you know, HUD will renew their HAP contract in 2036, but nobody knows what the world is going to look like in 20 years. Right. Um, and and so I think, like his feeling is, it would be irresponsible for me as an owner to commit myself to something where I do not know if it if it's actually possible if the programs that allow me to do this are not going to be in place in 20 years, right? And that's that's on the federal level, the state level, the city level, and this, none of these none of these agencies are going to commit 20 years in advance to providing any sort of subsidy to, to allow these projects to be. But again, I think this is all very unlikely because, as he stated in his letter, in all likelihood, you know. These projects are going to remain affordable because they have this the tax exemption, and there's an incentive for him to keep the house. Okay, so right, but the, I was going to say the restricted debt doesn't say that he has to forever be affordable. It says that should he not be, he has to provide the required parking as if it was never affordable. So it uh, it gives him the opt out if in 20 years that contract is not renewed and he decides, oh, this is the perfect place for market rate housing. Right. He just has to put the required parking on the on the site somewhere. Right. I mean, I think, unfortunately, like we, we talked a little bit about this before, but so, right. I mean, part of this agreement was like good landscaping for the tenants and things like that, which is something that they wanted. I, I understand what you're saying about the restrictive debt. Yeah. So here's, here's the problem. Yep. You want something from us, you need to give us something, right? Um, at the moment, you're describing something where we're not going to have income restrictive units, restricted mm -hmm. units for the life of the no parking, not uh, parking not being available. So either provide the required parking by adding more stackers or whatever it is you do, and then you don't need us, or um, give us something that commits to providing parking in the future. Otherwise, it's sort of a hollow special permit. It's not getting anything in return. Okay, while, I mean, while you may be earnest, it will soon become a special permit that's abused by others who aren't. Who are like, oh, let's just sign this, say we're going to do affordable parking till 2036, and then we're going to flip this to market, and ha ha, we don't have to provide any parking. Right. And but I mean, but, but the, the special permit doesn't require no parking, right? It's just a, a bit of relief on the parking requirements. No, right? it's no, taking it away the parking. Away their parking requirement, period. A hundred percent. All those required parking spaces are gone now because you're building a building on it, right? And you're only providing the required parking for 
the, new building. the, the new, new building market and market only rate. for the market right. units right. because there's no parking requirement for the as for the low income units, right? So it's kind of like getting your cake and eating and eating and eating. And you need to give this. There's a public policy reason behind this special permit, which is to provide low affordable housing. So. We which is being we provided. It is. We are facilitating we're, the development of affordable housing here. I think there is no requirement in the special permit, as you all know, about any term of years for the, ensuring affordability. Why, thir why is 30 years the, um, I, I think the requirement? I think the text may not be specific. It is but, not. But uh, if you go back to the way the text was written and the hearings, the public testimony and all of that that happened and what is on record at the council hearing, the intent was to retain and secure existing public housing and, and, and uh, sorry, affordable housing. And that and, and that really was the impetus for this text to be written. This was a way to generate additional revenue for the affordable housing mm -hmm. and to provide housing opportunity for future additional affordable right. housing. Which is the case. So, yeah. right. So while the text may not be there, but that really was the intent. And I think and the question is the term of years that's being placed on it by the board. Um, the 30 years, where, where why it does it have to be 30 years? It's not a term of years. It's permanent. You it's eliminate all the parking from the site. Previously, we had a discussion that because we have an existing restrictive deck on the new housing, that's 30 years, and the discussion by the board was they wanted something that matched that, because the house contract that was only 20 it, years. So they ride in tandem because right, you did mention so that, so that would be 30 years. Then. But at this, but the whole issue is in a situation where we can see that there is a place to put the parking, there isn't any any reason why at any time in the future the parking isn't put there. It, at the time when the restricted it, it, units are removed. Especially since we're considering it to be such a minute possibility with a rel relatively easy fix. And I think we're just asking the board to understand here the predicament that it's we're not in. It's a predicament. You're not in trying to resolve that. It's a deal. Deals work or get negotiated. So you need to go back and negotiate your deal to provide for assurances to us that the housing will remain income restricted. For as long as or, we'll enforce the restricted or, declaration. Or the parking is provided. It's easy. And it's just a deal that needs to get worked out again. Negotiations, that's what makes the world go around. Okay. I mean, okay. previously this would have been a condition. Um, no, no, it's never been a who condition. Is going to be, no, no, it's, I mean, this type of requirement, I would think, would be more appropriate as a condition rather than a restrictive no, declaration. No, because we have no way of enforcing a condition against a board someone who's not a participant in this project. The, the, the condition is enforced against the current, the, the ground lessor, right? And so it's how against do we the enforce line. against the ground lessor when he's not even a party to this application? So we need the ground lessor to be a party to the restrictive deck and the party to this condition. And I don't want to debate this anymore. I think we've been very clear. So let's move on to the other next subject, which is the shortfall of the 19 spaces. Yeah. Do you need me to sign in again for that's Wait, the second that's next project? No, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's the, the next, next case. case. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I can, I can All right, so what's the date on this? Um, Do you have any speakers? Are there any speakers on this? Yeah. <coughs> sorry. OK. Um, there were minor corrections that were needed on the EAS. I don't know. Yeah, they were fine. They were fine? Okay. We're done. Okay. Done. Same thing with the other. All right. So we need to. Okay. So let's see. And also the, um, I think there was a comment about the drawings where the, sorry. Yeah. The drawings need to be amended to show, because it's a string dimension that's Really inaccurate. That shows 49 foot nine inches between the buildings. It's yes. not allowed. I mentioned that we would correct. Right, yes. and that the note will be moved to say DOB to confirm relocation of rear yard equivalent complies with the zoning resolution. Yes. Right. Okay. We're making those changes. Um, and then we had a problem with a parking count on the cellar on the first floor. Is right. Also matching? making that change. Yep. You're, you're, so you're going to those changes have actually already been made. We just didn't have a chance to submit before okay. the hearing. Okay. Good. All right. So. We'll uh, timing. Uh, well, if we're going to, I mean, really, we want a restrictive deck, so we need to allow time to for you to make your negotiations and then provide us with a restrictive deck. We have standard one that we can share with you. Yeah, we can share the template right. we use for other special okay. cases. So I think we should give them, like, fully end of April or something like that. Or okay. 
in order to do that. It's negotiated. Um, and get back and forth with the restrictive debt, right, to the council's office. Sure. Okay, so. Uh, I mean, we can have that all done much sooner if it's possible to have a sooner hearing. I mean, we'll, we'll know either way about the restrictive deck sooner than April. Well, okay. The either way, it's not going to be an either way. It's well, going to be a restrictive deck, so you just need to, that's why I want to give well, you enough I can't, time. Well, I can't sign it, so. No, I know you can't. So that's why I want to give you enough time to make it clear to the lessor, ground lessor, that this is what we need, um, or we can move forward with your project. So I think we'll have... Time will not make a difference. I think if it's possible to have a March hearing date, that would be great. Oh, March is no, it's not possible. Happen at this point. Can I ask you a question? Um, are there any uh, are these projects that are coming online? A couple of affordable units that are coming online from this project or the Johnson one. Are they being counted towards any of the city's housing closing deals or anything like that? No, they're totally privately financed. Yeah, totally private. No, no I just had to ask. Yeah, just mm -hmm. in terms of timeline. No, they're, yeah, they're no, no. They told us earlier it's privately funded. Okay. Um, we can do an April 3rd submission for our April 23rd hearing. Okay. Okay, item number 23, 2018-55-BZ-222 Johnson Avenue, Brooklyn. Raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Are you all going to testify? Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board and respond honestly to board member questions? Mm -hmm. Nora Martins from Ackerman LLP for the applicant. Uh, so I think um, on this one, uh, we had a similar comment on the income restricted uh, housing unit definition. So we will uh, submit the same information as for 159 Borum. And I think the only um, other item other than the restrictive deck that was noted by the board was the parking shortfall. Right. So we did, um, I just want to discuss briefly the parking study and additional information that was provided to the board uh, prior to this hearing. So the parking study that was prepared um, generated the anticipated parking demand for the zoning lot, which includes the new building, which is 116, un 116 units, and the existing buildings, which are 79 units, so a total of 195 units, um, 92 of which are market rate units. All the other units are in some way income restricted. Sorry, how many are market? 92. 92, mm -hmm. thank you. Those are all in the new building. So the balance, the 103 units will are affordable units in the new building or existing income restricted housing units. So, however, the parking study. Wait, wait. Sorry. Can I say that sure. one more time? There are 92 market rate and. 92 market rate, out of the 116 okay. units in the new building, plus 79 income restricted existing units, right. for a total of 195 units on the zoning lot. So the parking demand study, for very conservative purposes, bases their demand on all of the units on the zoning lot, regardless of income, restriction, and whether they're new or existing. So the result is very conservative. <coughs> Generated a demand of 65 parking spaces. 46 are provided on site. So there is that shortfall of 19 spaces. However, we are 46 spaces based on the 195 units is providing parking for almost 24% of the unit. Um, Paul mentioned it briefly on two other projects they've done very recently. And our par the parking site that was submitted to the board part of this hearing was amended to include this additional information. Um, the actual parking utilization of two new buildings in this, in this neighborhood <coughs> are 5% at 83 Bushwick and 8% at 66 Ainsley, far below um, but those are the parking utilization. No, they're 80-20 buildings. Those are 80-20. Mm -hmm. So they actually have more market rate units than the proposal. So, so can I ask you, I mean, it seems to me that there must be some kind of data sources that it has to do with the difference between part car ownership in lower income neighborhoods, therefore the income restricted unit rep representatives, versus market rate units that are paying whatever the market rate in this area is because people who are paying market rate are more likely to have cars. This is a location where it's pretty convenient to drive right to Long Island so that you might have a car more likely to, to I mean, and we've seen that, more likely to have a place to go. Why would um, people in Bushwick necessarily be driving to Long Island? That seems, I don't understand that assumption. Long, it's close to Long Island, and so that's an opportunity to have weekend activities, 
going on trips, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously people with more money tend to have cars where car use is, um, is desirable. Right, and people with less money don't have cars because it's expensive to have a car. It'd be different if this is located in a place where kind of nobody has cars, like if this were in Manhattan where nobody has cars, or parts of Brooklyn, even those, I would even say even in Brooklyn, um, in sort of the Dumbo areas, a lot of people have cars, right? We're giving, can we, we have actual information here about buildings in this neighborhood that have been built recently with real parking utilization so, numbers. Can we use that information? So, yes. So I think, but the point is it shouldn't just be, I think, I don't know, you don't have your consultant here? Yes, she is here. So let's talk with your yes. consultant so we can... Be sworn in. You could uh, come to the um, podium, do you, affirm, you can be sworn in from there. I can swear you in if you would like. Do you affirm... <coughs> Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board and to respond honestly to board member questions? Oh, and you need to sign in, but when you're finished. Please state your name for the record. Sure. Uh, my name is Aviva Lorenti. I work at Sam Schwartz Engineering. I'm the traffic consultant for this project. You have to be sworn in? I swore her in. Oh, you I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. okay, so so the question is, if you're just using census track data, mm -hmm. Does the census tract data take into account anything to do with income levels? It doesn't. It just sort of blends it all together. There is income level information in the census, but when it comes to vehicle ownership, it's included as just per household. Right. So, but so is there any kind of data source where, I mean, for instance, when we have senior housing, we have data sources that talk about how many people in senior housing actually have cars, right? Um, that, that ends up coming into the studies. If the, if the argument here is that fewer people who are in the income restricted units um, have cars, if that's the argument, then isn't there some kind of data source that's available that, that looks at that question versus what people in market rate units do in terms of owner, car ownership? Um, for all studies that I've done for the Department of City Planning and the Department of Transportation, they simply use this source from the census per household. It's not a function of income at all. They can't guarantee who's going to live in these units at any point, so this is the data source that they use for all parking analyses. But, in, but so in this case, you can guarantee who's going to live in the units, right? Because they're income restricted. Right, but the census data is not defining vehicle ownership, I don't believe, by income level. It's just by household. No, I understand census data isn't, but are there any other kind of data sources that look at, there must be something in like that look at well, there's your, obviously you can do surveys and that's sort of what Nora was alluding to mm -hmm. is that we have actual data from this neighborhood of these kinds of units that we could use as a source but it's showing that it's a much lower vehicle ownership than we're proposing in this study because mm -hmm. we're, we're relying on your study right your study is telling us we have a shortfall of 19 cars and that's what we rely on so it, if there's a reliable source of information that indicates that there's another way of looking at your study, but we need to see what's the reliable source of information, right? That would be acceptable. Go ahead. Could, could you possibly expand your survey to more developments instead of just those two? So then we could see there's a pattern. Actually, we have, um, sorry, mm -hmm. we have Stephanie Malon here from a uh, broker who has worked on the in this, in this neighborhood. I could speak to that, or she could submit in writing. Okay, but, but it, it needs to be something that's based on, for instance, you're, you're just talking about the, the housing that's here where it's not really clear what the parking utilization would really be because the parking lot has been closed, right? So it's not r really clear how what the utilization would be if the parking lot were open. Right, but you gave us two other open. developments. Right. So if you but could give us a list of developments, which I think we had a case um, a long time ago that requested a parking waiver in Harlem. Mm. And what they did is they showed us that there were across the street, in a radius, there were several developments that had a requirement of like 25%, but only when they built the parking out, only had utilization of like 18% mm. of the parking lot to show that a similar type of development is not going to really generate that kind of a parking demand, even though zoning requires that we provide it. Right. So, but, and to be scientific about this, you need to know 
so the income mix of these apartments, right? So I mean, I, I, so that that's part of it, right? So if you're looking, um, cause I, I I want the study to be scientific. I don't want it to be just something that it feels like it's not going to be necessary. So when when you're you're looking again at what is available in the immediate area of apartment buildings, what the typical apartment mixes, unit mixes, in terms of income, and then the utilization of the existing parking lots where the parking lots are made available, okay? But I, I really would like it to be coming, it needs to come from our cons our consultant, not yeah. coming from... So absolutely, I mean, we can work with um, Sam Schwartz and Nooklin, our broker, Stephanie's from Nooklin, they, Nooklin has digitized like leasing records and so they can make it clear like how many how many new leases have parking spots associated with them. And I think it sounds like your particular concern is market rate housing. Um, so we will focus on that. But again, I just want to reiterate that our experience, Nooklin's experience, is that the demand for parking in these market rate developments that are being built in Williamsburg and Bushwick are much less than um, than is required by the zoning code, and I think that's also reflected in the fact that the community board agreed to approve this special permit, and that the council member has submitted a letter of support for this special permit, this parking special permit. There doesn't right. seem to be any particular concerns about parking in the community. Right. I also, I also just want to clarify that there's a 19 spot parking shortfall in Tutu Johnson, but Sam Schwartz pointed out that those spots are easily found on the street. During we don't do shortfalls on the street. So this is what the point is. Right. All of our parking waivers, yep. when the parking study indicates a shortfall, yep. shortfall has to be met inside the building. We do not rely on street. That's the whole point. Got it. The parking study okay. has to indicate that the number of parking spaces in the demand are met on site. Okay? Got it. All right. So, okay, so I'm counting on Sam, so Sam Schwartz's office is um, known for putting together really scientific studies, and so it shouldn't be sort of loosey-goosey information. It's information that, the, that their office feels is a reliable source and can then reliably tell us what they think the demand is based on reliable sources, okay? Yes, we'll do that. All right, and same holds for the respective declaration issue. Um, okay. Um, are there any speakers on this one? No. So let's, uh, so for the same, same date, one. April yeah. 23rd, submission date of April 3rd. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Item number 24, 2018, 95 BZ. Yes, you oh, she's sorry. This is an adjournment. That's why we're doing this otherwise. <laughs> I don't think I have to swear in front of Jay Goldstein on the. 120 yeah, Avenue M, Brooklyn. Yeah. Go ahead. Jay Goldstein on behalf of uh, Ridge Shovel Bell PC for the app. Okay. They have open hazmat air quality and noise reviews pending, so we should give them also until April 23rd. Here we go. They said, that, I mean, they told me that that March date would work. I know March is out for you guys, but March if you have something eight, earlier in April. Out March us. is out. No, I understand that, but I know you had an April. We have 9th. April 9th. There, it's up to the chair. There are 26. They um, on April 9th. They kind of indicated to me that it would be that they'd be good with the March date. So I assume April I assume 9th be would be fine. Date, but I just wanna, this is a variance. Nonprofit. Orientations. We had programmatic needs on the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions. On this one, so with April regard 23rd, to the programmatic we'll need, move and it up for one more later. later? Okay, yeah, so you're at April. Today. You're April 23rd. Okay. They are April 23rd, but the submission date of April 3rd. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're taking a 30-minute break. Back at three. Three o'clock. Uh, Starting with new cases. No, it's too much. Too much sitting in. No, no. no. Okay, we're back on the record. This is the Board of Standards and Appeals public hearing for February 12th, 2019. We'll continue with the zoning calendar. New cases, item number one, 2018-58BZ, 1182 Broadway, Manhattan. Raise your right hand. 
You affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board to respond honestly to board member questions. Yep. Please sign and proceed. <clears throat> there we go. Good afternoon, Daniel Braff on behalf of the applicant. I attended yesterday's executive session. I believe the first uh, comment related to the posting of the notices, um, we did post in the commercial elevator. So the notices were posted in the residential lobby on the counter, as well as inside the commercial elevator. I think there were also some comments relating to the plans. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if this was for council relating to the soundproofing. Um, maybe key, I think there was a comment to key it into the. That that's drunk. for you, your mm. for your architect to do. Okay. So by keying in, there's a little designation that gets put on the floor plans. Yep. That uh, that indicates when that where the detail from the other page is located. No problem. And I believe the last comment related to gross floor area. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good, good, a good pickup. I was looking through the plans, and it was using a net floor area number for the drawings. And actually, the gross is, I just got the email from the architect, 3882. 3882 so, square feet, Yes. Right? OK. Gross. OK. So here is a question for you. I don't know if there's enough time. I don't know how long this is going to go on for this hearing. but. Um, since the only thing we need done is the plans keyed, the acoustical details on, that are on page T105, keyed to the floor plans, if it's possible for you to talk to the architect right now um, and have them actually do the work right now, we could do what's called put this on for second call and, and you, they send it to you and then you send it to submit. Mm -hmm. And then that's possible for us to be able to close and vote on this application. Otherwise, unfortunately, we'd have to play this. Move it up. I will uh, give it a try. Okay. You got half an hour. I'd like to second this. <laughs> so they need to work fast. I'm going to try. Because we don't, I don't know that we have a lot. Of yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Item number two, 2018 165 BZ, 25 <laughs> Hudson Street, Manhattan. Raise your right hand. You you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the board. And you respond honestly to board member questions. Yes. Okay. 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 Good afternoon, Jay Goldstein for the applicant. Uh, didn't think there were any questions yesterday. No, I just because I might have mixed this up with another mm -hmm. application. So Was we there submitted notice? the notice from the, we submitted the regular notice with the mailings plus a picture of the notice in the residential lobby. Okay. January 18th at 1231 p.m. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, sometimes I cut and paste and I didn't no problem. I did that. Happy I got it right. All right. Um, okay, so I have a question actually. Uh, since so, since you the uh, PC opened since the application was filed, yeah. the hours of operation you had in that statement of facts were proposed. Do you know if they're those the were the they were the proposed based on what they wanted it to be? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We generally do it like that because you know when they first open, it's reduced hours till they get sure, like very the busy. Open. So we give her kind of a. So it's hours. shown as 5.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday, seven days a week. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That's an early month, Sunday morning class. The yoga um, studio. <laughs> what? The yoga studio with yeah. a lot of sound attenuation. Yes, a lot of sound attenuation. Yeah. Okay. So then, Good are there choice. any speakers on this? Then I'd like to make a motion to close. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chanda? Aye. Commissioner Hartley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Mm -hmm. And a motion to grant. Chair Perlmutter? Aye. Vice Chair Chandas? Aye. Commissioner Shotley Brown? Aye. Commissioner Shetta? Aye. Commissioner Shabetta? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number three, 4311 BZ, 1926 East 21st Street, Brooklyn. Good afternoon. Lear Altman from the Loft Lear Altman from the Loft Lear Altman. I assume you do not need me to swear in. No. no. We're no. going to adjourn this so the architect can come to the next. Thank you. And the applicant can respond to the comments that we made yesterday at the review. With pleasure. Okay. So to give time to do that work, 
not a small amount of work. But well, I spoke with the architect. Would it be possible to have a date of April 23rd? It would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, April 20th. I'm so glad to you hear like, somebody so happy. Spoke to my heart right there. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. What yes. date did you not want me to ask for for curiosity? March. 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 Anything yes. in March. No. Well, I know you can't do March 26. We've been through I, that. I can't, and I know you're full other than that, and I spoke with the architect. I know April 9th is also busy. Yes. So April 23rd with the submission date of April 3rd. April 23rd, April 3rd. And we had also discussed that the new submission be submitted to the community board and the Of course, I will point yes. out for the record that every submission I've made to your board <coughs> I've also sent to the community board, so they are aware of everything you're aware of. What I'm going to do this time, I think I'm going to try to resubmit everything, just because this is a long history yeah. submitted yeah. partially by me, partially by the <coughs> prior applicant. Complete this way, if I give you one complete package, and I'll speak with community board 15 if they'd like to see me at yeah. 14, okay. if they want to see me back out, it'd be my pleasure. Okay. So um, can you please give us some kind of letter that shows that you, the cover letter to show that you submitted what you submitted to the community board so we have on record right. that you submitted well, to them? That's why we always put the CC list on the bottom. That's everybody that I've sent it to. So if I've sent it to you with a CC list on the bottom, I've um, sent CCs to all those individuals. Okay. That's what Henry said. We did, you did send the to the community board. What, what did you say? Said again? I thought Henry it said he, she did send to the community mm -hmm. board. Of course, did. I don't of course. Know. Yeah. All right. No, we have proof of notice of hearing to officials but and neighbors, I, but we didn't have proof that the they received the updated application. No. Right, but the thing was, we have an approval from 2011, and I think yes. the concern was wanting them to see kind yes. of like a oh, renewed, I, like yeah, because I made a eight note years that he later, hi. Well, when I, I made a submit, note that he said that they did, but all right, no, that the, his note is that the community board voted on it in 2011. Oh, okay. All right. right. When we I want submit them to look at it again. Okay, fine. Right. When I submit the full revised to you, of course, they will get a copy as well. Okay. And I, I will call like them and see if they'd yeah, like me to come back out. Okay. okay. Right. That'd all be right. great. No problem. No problem. All right, so we picked the date. Yep. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, item number four, 2018 140BZ 100-03 North Conduit Avenue, Queens. Yes, yeah, sign. Oh, sorry. You need to sign. Oh, right. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony for this board and respond honestly to board member questions? I know this is a jurisdictional thing, but it doesn't matter. Thank you. Good afternoon, Eugene Pellman for the applicant. Um, we understand that the hearing is going to be postponed. It's being voted on by city council tomorrow on the 13th by the full council. So we were a day late. Um, <laughs> day early. <laughs> I think there's a song about that. All right, so unfortunately now we're fortunately we're now in April. Yeah. We're in April. Is anything? Yeah. Um, yeah. No good deed, right? <laughs> um, so uh, the next hearing will be April twenty third, and I don't believe there's any submission. No, because right? they've um, unless well actually there were no could notes. certainly respond. We'll submit the updated zoning map. It should be ready by yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And and also if you are meeting the community board's conditions and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So we didn't go didn't through go our through comments, right. so don't assume that he heard the comments. So this is a postponed Fair hearing okay. where we did, I'm just saying this yeah. on the record, where we did not go over our comments in the review mm -hmm. session. Okay. So we'll do a new notice on this for the 23rd? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll have to generate a new notice. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Item number five, 2018-155-BZ, 1123 East 27th Street, Brooklyn. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this board, and to respond honestly to board member questions? <coughs> Good afternoon, Jay Goldstein for the applicant. Uh, I, attested, yes, I attended yesterday's review session. I think it's best to uh, respond in writing with diagrams and charts and plans that match. With regard to the heights, we did discuss it in the statement of facts that they're all, all the rear yards behind us that are mentioned at 20 feet are two stories plus attics. I'll try and key it to photographs to yes. illustrate the point. More than photographs. Also, so part of the problem with uh, just the description without any, any kind of visuals is for one, many of us are visual thinkers, so a description, right. how do we know? 
Um, so there, it should be when you provide the rear yard <laughs> diagram, it should indicate on that rear yard diagram yeah, we've been what the heights are of those buildings in that diagram that we're relying on. I'm going to try and key it, figure it out, how to make it a visual. So diagram. because a lot of the times the photographs also aren't very helpful because the photographer isn't necessarily taking the picture with the intention of showing that information. Right. And then the photograph Understood. isn't labeled to say, that's the house we're talking about. See, it's a two-story house. So they tend to be so general that I often can't tell what I'm looking I'll, at. Yeah, I think a lot of times it's, it's done to show, or they, they're taken from the perspective just to show our backyard which right. doesn't help us out, and I understand that right. a lot of times it is hard because there are trees in the very crowded backyard, right. so it's hard again. And the other, we have one applicant who actually writes on the photograph itself, even though I know all these are digital, but that applicant um, probably is not using any kind of digital. I think he's printing out, right. and he takes a magic marker and he points to the to the house and says two-story house done directly to the rear. Yeah. You can do it digitally also. I've done it right. before on my pictures and I can, again, I'll, I'll do it on this. Right, so it, right, so that would. So yeah. Again, it's, I do discuss it all in my statement. I'll just key it to a, to a map and photos for you. Okay, that'd be good, okay. So uh, if I can have March 19th, please. I'm joking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> har, har. See, it's the end of the day. It's That's early. fantastic, Jay. I appreciate, uh, it. Uh, I appreciate it, Jay. So, <laughs> April 23rd? No? Oh, okay. I, get the, I know there's an earlier April date that was still available. Oh, still available? Um, so it's up to the chair. April 9th, 26. <clears throat> That's okay. Okay. Um, what I wanted to say is. Uh, no, you uh, wanted an axon. We also needed an axonometric from two sides. Because of, yeah, because Got the roofline is. And while they're looking, while the architect is looking at it, to make sure that the elevations and the sections and everything. So I'll go through. I mean, the, the comments yesterday were there was a typo in my statement of facts in the chart. I'll, I'll correct it. With regards to the attic, I'll look at the heights for the 11 feet to see if it's necessary or if we can bring it down. The roof line, attic, uh, <laughs> attic plan, and elevations still match. We'll make them match. Right. We'll provide axons from two or more sides. Um, and then in terms of uh, you know the mm -hmm. rear yards, I'll show you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are there any speakers on this? No. So uh, right. next hearing will be April 9th, the submission date of March 20th. One second. Sorry. I wrote the wrong date. Uh, 320. Submission 49 hearing. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, recalling item number one, 2018-58-BZ-1182, Broadway, Manhattan. You're still under oath. The uh, yes, the architect uh, wasn't able to do it. I didn't April think so. If it, was, if it was a longer <laughs> agenda, <laughs> maybe. That but was quite a turnaround. Yeah. Yeah. Right, sorry. Right. But that, that's fine. But, Under, understood. Okay, so there's I'm just we have a couple of adjournments. Um, next week. Next week, we do. We do. We have the two A cases are gone. We have next two, week. Yeah, we have four out of um, so, uh, not next week, 26th, I'm sorry. Uh, could you submit by the end of the week? Chan, I'm actually away. I'd have to get coverage for the hearing. Could, yeah. oh no, but the next hearing, I'm sorry, it's February 26th. Oh, the 26th, okay. Yes, yeah, so not next week, but I was asking whether it would be, you'd be, po it'd be possible <coughs> to, um, submit uh, by Friday. Yes. The submission dates are that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Friday for February 26th. Mm -hmm. Friday for February 26th. That's going to be drawings with the uh, soundproofing keyed into the floor plans. That's all. Yeah, that's exactly. It. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This concludes the public hearing for February 12, 2019.